Chapter 76 Regarding Dumbledore's impatient behavior, Professor Flittick and Hagrid had no idea. They were obviously impatient. Only Rowling felt that Dumbledore's image in his heart was slightly disillusioned. This is not to say that Rowling admired Dumbledore before. But Dumbledore is also a legendary wizard after all, and he likes to play cards. Doesn't he sound like he's talking? Ho Xinxing. But he quickly adapted to this. Dumbledore is not a god. He is a man. No matter how powerful Dumbledore is and how legendary his experience is, he still has his own preferences. Why can't I play poker? Even if he likes playing marbles, it's normal, right? Luo Lin no longer thinks about this kind of thing. Start immersing yourself in playing poker. At the beginning, Dumbledore and others haven't quite adapted to the gameplay yet. He was defeated by Luo Lin's shameless sneak attacks in several games. I still won with different teammates. As a result, Dumbledore and the three of them had several magic marks on their faces. Looking at the various colored marks on Dumbledore's face, Luo Lin almost laughed out loud. This was an image of Dumbledore he had never seen before. A bit like an old naughty boy. But Dumbledore didn't seem to care. Even when Rowling painted magic marks on his face for the first time, he encouraged him to paint boldly, preferably like Professor Flittick and like a work of art. Until now, Rowling still couldn't figure out whether Dumbledore really felt that the things on Professor Flittick's face were artistic. But he said so, and Luo Lin could only do what he wanted. Played cards for two hours. There was only one magic mark on Luo Lin's face, and it was because the cards were too bad. This made him feel very happy. Especially when he was painting magic marks on the faces of Hagrid and Dumbledore, he almost sang the tune he was humming in his heart. But after Dumbledore and the others became familiar with the rules, Luo Lin found that the marks on his face began to increase again. At noon, Hagrid went to the auditorium and brought everyone lunch. Luo Lin was eating while counting the marks on his face. Compared to yesterday, there were five more marks on his face. Follow the rules. The winners and losers each choose a loser to mark him. In other words, Luo Lin has lost five times in the morning. This is certainly better than Dumbledore. Dumbledore already had more than a dozen marks on his face. The marks on Hagrid's face also increased from three to ten. Combined with his thick beard, it looks a bit like a road in a forest. Professor Flittick couldn't tell there were a few more words. Mainly because there were so many marks on his face that he couldn't even count them. Advertisement Professor Flittick's face now looks like an oil painting, which has been daubed arbitrarily, giving it a somewhat abstract feel. After looking at it for a long time, Rowling suddenly felt that Dumbledore seemed to be right. Professor Flittick's face was indeed a bit artistic and abstract. After lunch, everyone then played cards. The fight lasted until evening. They just let it go. Luo Lin's face at this time can already be described as horrible. He is very uncomfortable now. Because compared to the previous two days, there were actually more marks on his face today. Professor Flittick was like a god after he became thoroughly familiar with the rules. Winning streaks. There aren't many marks on the face. But since there were too many before, it was not obvious whether there were too many. Hagrid is similar to Roland. His luck or skills were not good at four-player poker, and his face was painted a lot. The worst of all was Dumbledore. There is nothing wrong with Dumbledore being a legendary wizard, but he obviously doesn't have much talent in playing cards. Just one day, the mark on his face was similar to that of Luo Lin, which belonged to the crisscrossing traffic arteries. Fortunately, today is not too long. There is still some skin on the face that is normal color. The day passed like this. Roland spent another day playing cards. The next day, he got up refreshed. I thought Dumbledore wouldn't be coming today, and Hagrid said yesterday that he had some work to do today. So he wouldn't come either. That would not be enough people. There should be no need to play cards today. The previous three days were very depressing, and Luo Lin decided to regroup. Playing cards? A fart. Stop playing cards and study hard is the right way to go. Boom. Boom, boom. Just when Luo Lin took out the defense against the dark arts textbook and prepared to study, the door rang again. Luo Lin looked dull. What's going on? Why is there still someone today? Is Professor Flittick's addiction that big? Want to come alone? Luo Lin was very helpless. He doesn't want to play cards. Luo Lin stepped forward and opened the door. His eyes widened suddenly. There are certain similarities and differences with what he expected. Advertisement Hagrid did not come, but Dumbledore came. Professor Flittick is here too. This was nothing, not enough to surprise him. What surprised him the most was another person standing next to Professor Dumbledore. Professor Pomona Sprout. Professor Sprout, Professor of Herbology at Hogwarts, head of Hufflepuff House. A chubby witch who looks kind and friendly. According to Hagrid, Professor Sprout is a true Hufflepuff. 
She is kind and optimistic. Be fair and compassionate. Be brave and strong. And he's also a bit protective. In Hogwarts, her reputation is also not small. No worse than Professor Flittick, and far more than Snape. Such a professor. Why did you follow Dumbledore and the others here? Luo Lin also met Professor Sprout before. Although it was just a simple meeting, he could tell that Professor Sprout was a little cold towards him. The indifference does not mean that Professor Sprout hates him, but the reluctance to get close can be seen. At this time, he suddenly came to his dormitory. Could it be that Professor Sprout wanted to warn him not to lead Dumbledore and the others astray? Or maybe, she also wants to play poker. Luo Lin had a lot on his mind. Hello, Professor Sprout, Professor Dumbledore, Professor Flittick. Who are you? He couldn't help but ask. Hagrid has something to do today. So I invited Professor Sprout. What do you think? Dumbledore replied. Really here to play poker. What can Luo Lin say? He smiled and brought everyone into the house. Welcome, welcome, that's all. Professor Sprout replaced Hagrid and joined the poker game. Soon, Luo Lin became familiar with Professor Sprout. He wasted another day and had many marks on his face. Before going to bed, Luo Lin lamented again and again. Luo Lin, Luo Lin, you are so degenerate. How can you play cards every day? The next day, Dumbledore was in trouble, and there was another unfamiliar person in the dormitory. Professor Aurora Sinister. Luo Lin once again wasted a day. The next few days, different people come to play cards in his dormitory every day. In the end, everyone except Snape, Quirrell, Professor Trelawney and Filch came to his dormitory at least once. Advertisement. Chapter 77. Play cards. Play cards. Also TMD is playing cards. Luo Lin found that he seemed to have done nothing serious these days, only playing cards. But those professors are here. He can't drive all these people away, or if others come to his house, he won't play cards with them, right? Luo Lin's face is very thin, and he can't do such a thing yet. Of course, it's also possible that playing cards is really fun, especially when the poker players are different every day. Speaking of which, playing cards is a bit good. Luo Lin felt that there were many marks on his face before, and he was embarrassed to go out for fear of being seen by others. At this time, there was no such concern at all, because in the entire school, apart from the students, there are also Snape and the others. All the professors' faces were painted with magical marks. Even Professor McGonagall. To Luo Lin's surprise, he also came. He originally thought that Professor McGonagall was very opposed to this kind of activity. It turns out that Professor McGonagall doesn't hate this kind of activity. She came with Professor Sprout. Rowling could see that the relationship between Professor McGonagall and Professor Sprout was quite good. However, Professor McGonagall does not object to the activity of playing cards. But he obviously rejects the fact that there are many marks on his face. So Professor McGonagall only came once. Never came again after that. She came the least. The other people's faces are basically painted to look like Professor Flittick's. Professor Flittick can be considered very proud these days. He was like a god when he was playing forehand poker. I lost only a handful of times, but I basically won all the time. Almost two weeks passed like this. Professor Flittick had the least mark on his face. Because every day everyone is being marked with new marks. But Professor Flittick rarely lost, so he had the fewest new marks on his face. The old marks have already begun to disappear naturally. As a result, Professor Flittick is now very proud. He was at almost every game. It made Luo Lin think that he didn't have any work to do. Found out after asking. Professor Flittick used to go back to handle some work after playing cards every day. It's really a combination of fun and work. Advertisement two weeks passed. The middle of August has arrived. There is only half a month left before the new semester starts. Rumors from professors are also circulating in Hogwarts. Anyway, it all revolves around why the professors suddenly have so many magic marks on their faces and they don't take the initiative to remove them. Only Professor Snape and others had nothing on their faces. Some speculate that this is a group activity among professors. Professor Snape was not allowed to participate in such activities because he was ostracized. In a sense, this guess is correct. Snape was indeed ostracized by Roland. In addition, Snape's popularity at Hogwarts was not very good. The result was that Snape had no idea about the poker activities in Luo Lin's dormitory. Wait until various rumors spread in the school. Snape took the initiative to understand. I learned that Luo Lin plays poker with some professors in the dormitory every day. This made him suspicious and at the same time wary. Naturally, he didn't understand why Luo Lin did this. What makes him wary is that he feels that Luo Lin must have an ulterior secret in doing so. 
Maybe he wanted to corrupt the professors in the school, dismantle Hogwarts from within. After thinking about this, Snape immediately went to find Dumbledore. When he saw those magical marks on Dumbledore's face, Snape understood. Dumbledore actually participated in this event. This made him even more worried. What if Professor Dumbledore, the most legendary and wise wizard, was corrupted by Rowling? Then won't Hogwarts become a world of dark magic in the future? Or will it become a paradise for the dead? Snape's ideas were simply wild. If Luo Lin knew what he was thinking, he would definitely give him a thumbs up. Snape's ideas still apply sometimes. There is nothing wrong with being a little wary. But we cannot be vigilant based solely on subjective assumptions. Snape made such a mistake. Certainly. For Luo Lin at this time. It didn't matter what Snape thought. Nor does it matter what students in school think. Advertisement the most important thing is that the card playing should come to an end for the time being. He was not yet fully familiar with the content of defense against the dark arts. The bones needed to protect the magic stone were not obtained either. He must finish these things quickly. After all, these things are quite important to him. The more solid the content of the defense against the dark arts course is, the less likely it will be to embarrass yourself in front of the students. As for the bones, it also depends on who comes out for some air in the dark room. So Luo Lin announced his decision on August 16th. No more playing cards for a while. As soon as the news came out, many professors were disappointed. But after Luo Lin explained, everyone understood Luo Lin's thoughts. The professor's attitude towards Luo Lin was completely different from the beginning. The previous indifference has long since disappeared, and everyone has regarded Luo Lin as their colleague and friend. And most people think that Luo Lin's character is quite good, not as dark and annoying as the legend says. That's all. Luo Lin got along with most of the professors at Hogwarts and maintained a good friendship. When he announced that he would no longer play poker, the professors, whose faces had been painted in a crisscross pattern, suspended this activity. Luo Lin finally managed to end playing cards every day. Then he stayed in the dormitory for a day. I spent the whole day just reading about defense against the dark arts. The next day, he got a piece of news from Hagrid. A few professors were in his dormitory when they weren't having a poker game. I actually organized a card game by myself and had a great time playing it. Thinking about it, there are only 10 days left before the start of school. Luo Lin suddenly felt worried, waiting for school to start. When Harry and the others arrive, what they see will not be a large group of professors with their faces painted on, right? And Dumbledore. This object of admiration for countless young wizards. If the young wizards see the paint on his face, and then hear that Dumbledore became like this because of playing cards, their yearning will definitely be dashed directly. But what does this have to do with Roland? Luo Lin shook his head and stopped thinking about it. Some of the marks on his face have completely disappeared now, but there are always many new imprints. It wasn't until he actively refused to play cards that the marks on his face gradually became less numerous. So far, there are only dozens of marks from the past week. I originally wanted to wait a few more days for all the marks on my face to disappear before going to Dumbledore to get the skeleton. Unexpectedly, Dumbledore came over on his own initiative. Advertisement Chapter 78 Dumbledore is not here to play cards this time. But the marks on his face always made Luo Lin feel a little funny. Professor, what's wrong? Luo Lin asked subconsciously. I have to go out for something in the next two days, and I won't be able to stay in school until school starts, so I thought I would give you the skeleton you need first. Dumbledore's explanation made Rowling realize. So that's it. Luo Lin nodded. Okay, Professor. Then he followed Dumbledore and headed to Hogsmeade. Walk on the road. He has been thinking about one thing. Dumbledore went out to do things with a lot of paint on his face and was discovered by others. Wouldn't he feel a little ashamed? On the surface, Dumbledore didn't seem to care at all about his appearance. When it comes to going out to do things, there is no emotion at all. If it were Luo Lin himself, he would definitely try his best to cover up his appearance. It's not that he cares about his appearance, but I don't want to be treated as a clown by others. No one dares to think of Dumbledore as a clown anyway. Others probably saw what Dumbledore looked like. I just feel that Dumbledore has some new hobby. Or maybe, like Dumbledore, he thought the things painted on his face were art. Luo Lin was thinking about things all the way. Soon we arrived at Hogsmeade. Dumbledore had a house here dedicated to storing his various collections. It's a house that's neither big nor small. When Dumbledore pushed the door open and entered, Luo Lin saw the scene inside. A very traditional storage room. There are various items related to magical animals or magical plants. There are also many different styles of clothes. There's even some food. Dumbledore was obviously familiar with this storage room. He took Luo Lin directly to the inner position. 
Luo Lin saw the three magical animal skeletons hanging on the wall at a glance. These are three very small animal skeletons. It doesn't look like there's much special about it. Advertisement the most important thing was that Luo Lin didn't know anyone, so he could only look at Dumbledore for help. Dumbledore introduces the skeletons of these three magical creatures. The first magical creature was called a salamander. This is a small lizard that lives in fire and feeds on flames. However, this lizard's survival time is very short, and its general lifespan is only a few hours. It can prolong life in the flame of its birth. Dumbledore didn't know much about this magical animal. After all, he is not an expert on magical animals. He just has an understanding of basic things. This salamander was given to him by a certain class of students, and he has been keeping it here. Except for a salamander skeleton. The other two magical animal skeletons are the evil bird and the bird snake. The owl is an African bird. It had very colorful feathers in life. Its cry is very sweet, but it can gradually make people lose their minds. When the live evil bird is sold, it needs to cast a silent spell, and it must be consolidated every month. The bird snake is a snake-like creature with wings that can change its size at will and expand and contract at will to adapt to its environment. When it was alive, the most valuable thing was actually the eggs of birds and snakes. The shells of bird and snake eggs were made of the purest and softest silver. Dumbledore knew even less about these two magical creatures. One of these two animals comes from Africa and the other comes from the Far East or India. They are not native species at all. It was also given to him by a certain class of students. He is of no use and has been kept here for collection. Now that Luo Lin, the necromancer, was in need, he directly planned to give it to Luo Lin. To be honest, Luo Lin felt a little disappointed now. He also thought that the skeletons collected by Dumbledore were such powerful magical animals. After all, Dumbledore is a legendary wizard, so his collection can't be too bad. It turned out to be just three small magical animals. And these three magical animals don't seem to have much special abilities. At least for Luo Lin, it was not enough to surprise him. But he soon figured it out. Dumbledore had no need to collect skeletons at all. He is neither a necromancer nor some black magician who wants to use bones to create evil objects. It's already pretty good to have three skeletons in your collection. If it hadn't been for the gift from three of his students, Dumbledore probably wouldn't even have collected these three skeletons. Luo Lin is still very contented. He quickly put aside his disappointed thoughts and began to carefully observe the three skeletons in front of him. Advertisement followed the previous idea. He was planning to release two soul servants. In other words, if the plan does not change, he should choose two from the three skeletons in front of him. But Dumbledore said that all three were given to him. Is it possible to summon three soul servants, use all three skeletons, and then let them guard the magic stone? Luo Lin thought about it carefully and felt that this idea was feasible. He had initially expected at least one large skeleton. The results are all small. If quality is insufficient, then quantity can only be used to meet the requirements. Three soul servants should be just right. Just enough to release one more soul servant. He looked at the skeletons collected by Dumbledore. It was found that these three skeletons were well-preserved without any defects. This satisfied him. A complete skeleton has certain benefits for soul servants to settle in. It can save some adaptation time and reduce the loss of the skeleton's own special abilities. Luo Lin looked satisfied. Dumbledore smiled. How about it, Rolling? Do you want to take them all? Of course, the professor gave it to me as a gift, and I have no reason to refuse. Don't worry, professor. Before school starts, I will definitely hand over the guardians to you, and they will be able to protect the magic stone. Roland made his promise. Just three soul servants. It is obviously impossible to stop Voldemort completely. Since Dumbledore was promised, Dumbledore sent him three more skeletons. Out of a reciprocal mentality, Luo Lin decided to take action personally to add an insurance to these three soul servants to ensure that Voldemort could not pass this level. As for Voldemort taking a detour and being able to bypass this level, that is not something Luo Lin needs to consider. With Dumbledore's permission, Luo Lin waved his hand, and all three skeletons entered his space. Then Dumbledore was not in a hurry to take Roland away. The two went to the Three Broomsticks bar for a drink. Dumbledore drank butterbeer and Rowling drank cherry juice. He has been drinking a lot these days while playing poker, and now he has no interest in drinking at all. The two drank and chatted. After drinking, Dumbledore and Rowling returned to Hogwarts Castle. Luo Lin returned to his dormitory. Prepare to release three soul servants. Advertisement. Chapter 79. Return to the dormitory. Place the three skeletons. 
Rowling began to discuss with Black and Longbottom which three soul servants to release. The job of the three soul servants this time is to serve as guards and protect the magic stone. Therefore, it cannot be particularly weak in terms of strength. The character also needs to be able to endure loneliness. After all, they will most likely need to stay on the third floor of Hogwarts for a long time. If your personality is too lively, I definitely can't stand such a day. Although if Luo Lin gave an order forcefully, they would definitely not disobey. But Roland didn't plan to do that. He wanted to find a few more homely people and kept watching from the third floor. With his methods, at least Voldemort could not break through from the front. Except for these two points. Other requirements don't matter. After all, he is just a guard. No different than a security guard. What can the security guard ask for? Just watch with wide eyes. Finish your request. Longbottom didn't answer at first. He is thinking about which soul servants meet the conditions. Blake was clearly prepared. She immediately gave her answer. Master, I have several candidates, including Crouch, Abbott, Birds, and Gunter. They all have stable personalities, especially Crouch, who is very homely. Blake has been thinking about this issue since he knew that Luo Lin was going to summon three soul servants again. She especially wanted to express herself and help Luo Lin choose the most suitable candidate. Luo Lin recalled it in his mind. He was more impressed by Crouch and Ibwa. Crouch is indeed, as Black said, very, very nerdy. Back when I was in Azkaban, Crouch never left his room except to do his work. Even Luo Lin is ashamed of his level of nerdiness. He occasionally walks around the island and looks at the sea. Crouch was not interested at all. This is a suitable candidate. As for Ibwa, the reason why Luo Lin remembered her was because Ibwa, like Blake, was also a girl. Among the servants of his soul, there are only six girls in total. Naturally, he will be more impressed. But Ibwa has no personality and is unremarkable. Even her soul power is similar to Blake's, so Luo Lin's impression of her is not as deep as Blake's. Advertisement that leaves birds and Gunter. Luo Lin didn't have much impression. Just remember these two people. They are similar to Longbottom. They are both honest types. Of course they are not as honest as Longbottom. In terms of soul power, he is not as good as Longbottom. Luo Lin's impression of them was that they worked hard and without complaint. It sounds like Black's suggestions are quite appropriate. Luo Lin then looked at Longbottom. Longbottom, what do you think? Longbottom first shook his head, then nodded. Except for AI Bo, who is not very suitable, the others are quite suitable. Why isn't Ibwa suitable? Blake couldn't help but ask. Ibwa doesn't like the dark environment. She should be reluctant to ask her to guard the magic stone. Longbottom said slowly. Huh. How do you know she doesn't like dark environments? Blake heard this and raised his own doubts. After all, Ibwa is also her good Jime. How could Longbottom know something that he didn't even know? I happen to know. That's all Longbottom said. And then he remained silent. Blake still wanted to ask. So Luo Lin spoke. Longbottom is right. When he said that, I remembered that Ibwa really doesn't like dark environments. He recalled when Abbott was in Azkaban. At that time, Ibwa always liked to stay under the light. Luo Lin also felt strange. Now that I think about it, I'm afraid that as Longbottom said, Ibwa is afraid of the dark. But now Luo Lin has another doubt. When did Longbottom, a man with thick eyebrows and big eyes, even notice such small details? Is he observing carefully? Or is it that he pays more attention to A.I. Bo? However, this was Longbottom's private matter, and Luo Lin had no intention of getting to the bottom of it. That's it, Gunter, Birds, and Crouch. It's good to let these three big men do their work. Let Ibo come out again when there is a chance in the future. Luo Lin made a decision. Blake nodded. She recommended four people, and the master chose three of them. This was the master's trust in her. She was still quite happy. But think of A.I. Bo Blake couldn't help but feel sorry for her secretly. It's so beautiful. I didn't expect that I couldn't come out because I don't like the dark. It's such a pity. Don't worry, when I have the opportunity in the future, I will be the first to recommend you. Black also didn't expect that Ibwa, a soul servant and undead creature, would be afraid of the dark. This was simply a strange thing. Advertisement logically speaking, all undead creatures like darkness. It can only be said that Ibwa is really special. After confirmation, Luo Lin didn't hesitate. Open the system panel directly. After taking a glance, he found that his level of necromancer had been raised to level 68. But there were no new skills, so he didn't care much. Turn on the soul servant module. Choose borders, Gunter, Crouch. The next moment, three green spots of light appeared on his fingers. The green light spot kept getting bigger, 
and finally turned into three balls of green fire. Luo Lin pointed his hand towards the three skeletons placed in front of him. Three groups of soul fire poured into the skeleton. Not a moment later, the salamander skeleton in the middle started to move. Then the evil woman bird and the bird and snake skeletons started to move one after another. Salamander is crouch. The evil bird is birds. The bird snake is gaunt. The three skeletons moved. After a little adaptation, he knelt directly in front of Luo Lin. Great master, your servants come to see you. Luo Lin waved his hand and they stood up. The three skeletons are not too big. It doesn't take up much space either. Luo Lin explained the reason why he summoned them. The three of them immediately fell to the ground again. Great master, please rest assured. We will do our best and will not let you down. Luo Lin did not stop them. Mainly because I blocked it several times at the beginning, but to no avail. In order to show their respect for him, these soul servants each have their own words. The three in front of me are relatively consistent. After finishing the task, Luo Lin began to ask the three of them if they had any special abilities in the skeletons of magical animals. Crouch's salamander skeleton is nothing special, except that it is relatively fire-resistant and can survive in flames. Bird's bird skeleton has a special ability. He can make a cry that will make anyone who hears the cry lose their mind. It's a bit like a basic version of Banshee's whale, which isn't too bad. Gunter's bird snake is the most special. As an undead creature, he can actually lay eggs. Advertisement Chapter 80 When I heard Gunter say that he could lay eggs, Luo Lin was completely confused. What the hell? Can an undead lay eggs? You will know after asking carefully. It turns out that the egg laid by Gunter is a derivative. It's not really laying eggs, it's just an act similar to laying eggs, and the thing produced is a special bomb. Luo Lin was a little confused after hearing this. I don't understand what's going on with Gunter. All I can say is that it is really special. Birds and snakes do not have this magical ability. Birds and snakes just lay eggs that are different from ordinary eggs, but not so different that it becomes a bomb. Luo Lin could only think that the soul servant entered the bird and snake skeleton, causing this ability to mutate. Either there is something special about this bird snake skeleton, or there is something special about Gunter. But this can barely be considered a new attack method. Roland asked Gunner to lay an egg, and then tested the power of the bomb. The power is not weak. The diameter of the explosion range is almost 3 meters. As long as ordinary people are hit by a bomb, they will definitely be shattered to pieces. If the wizard is accidentally bombed, the end will not be much better. Luo Lin found that the bird snake skeleton was quite easy to use. At least there was no problem in guarding it. Just let Gunter lay a few more eggs. A minefield could be laid. If Voldemort had let Quirrell sneak in and not discover these bombs, he would have been seriously injured. It seems like this. Gunter's bird snake skeleton is probably the strongest among the three skeletons. Crouch has no special abilities, so Bird's voice may not be able to influence Voldemort too much. Certainly, the special abilities of the three are actually just additional abilities. The main thing to look at is their own soul power. Each soul servant has its own soul ability. They borrow soul power and can use various means. According to Luo Lin's judgment, the three birds are definitely stronger than the little wizards studying in Hogwarts, but it should be weaker than professors like Professor Flittick. It mainly depends on the opponent's resistance to soul power. Advertisement Voldemort himself belongs to a special soul state. Rowling believed that it was not a big problem for the three birds to deal with Voldemort head-on, but he still needed to add a layer of insurance to the three of them. Think of this. Rowling took the three birds to Dumbledore's office. After Dumbledore saw the three skeletons, he immediately realized that Rowling had completed his preparations. He didn't expect Luo Lin to do it so quickly. I thought he would need to come back next time to get it done. Luo Lin, these three? He found that he didn't know whether to call him sir or ma'am. Roland quickly introduced him. This is Birds, this is Crouch, and this is Gunter. They are all men. Okay, are these three gentlemen the guardians you want to hand over to me? Dumbledore asked with a smile. Of course, they are all my very capable assistants. Professor, you can rest assured that with them around, it will be very difficult for anyone to break into the place they protect. Seeing how confident Rowling was, Dumbledore nodded. Thank you very much. After thinking for a while, Dumbledore spoke again. Well, you bring these three gentlemen and follow me. Rowling followed Dumbledore. They quickly arrived at the corridor on the third floor, entered the room, passed through the trapdoor, and after passing several rooms, came to a secret room. I'm going to put the magic stone here, and the three gentlemen will be the last level. Luolin, what do you think? Dumbledore asked. Of course no problem. 
Luo Lin was a little surprised, but did not object. The three boarders regard it as the final hurdle, and it can only be said that Voldemort is blessed. At the same time, Luo Lin also had to work harder. Make more arrangements. Otherwise, if Voldemort passed this level, he would also be disgraced. So after agreeing with Dumbledore's opinion, Roland began to arrange for birds and the others. First he opened the Soul Servant module. An exclusive function, skill sharing, was directly launched. Luo Lin was seen touching Crouch's lizard head with his hand, and the next moment, a bone spear appeared out of thin air above Crouch's small body. He shared his bone spear skills with Crouch. Then he put his hands on Bird's body. Burns's body trembled, and soul fire appeared around his body. He shared his soul fire skills with Bird's. Both of these are relatively basic skills, and both are lethal skills. Advertisement, but because Luo Lin's two skills have been maxed out. Therefore, its power cannot be underestimated. Dumbledore watched his operation from the side and couldn't help but shrink his pupils. When the bone spear and soul fire are summoned, he could feel the oppressive, evil aura. If this scene is seen by others, you will definitely think of Luo Lin as a black magician. He really doesn't look like a good person. Although Dumbledore could barely accept it, he also felt that Luo Lin was worthy of being a necromancer, and his methods were completely different from ordinary wizards. And being able to share his own methods with his undead was really an eye opener for him. And that wasn't what surprised Dumbledore the most. Luo Lin's next move made him feel quite threatened. Luo Lin came to Gunter's side, but this time he did not share his skills with Gunter. Instead, he started casting spells himself. He pointed to the ground casually. Play Stone Demon. A huge stone demon rose from the ground. The huge body of the stone demon almost touched the ceiling, and the entire body seemed to fill the entire room. Dumbledore didn't feel threatened by a giant stone mill, mainly because Luo Lin also used other means. Command Stone Demon The stone demon's power and speed have been strengthened in all aspects, and its body has shrunk slightly, but it looks more dangerous. This is not over yet. Luo Lin stretched out his hand again, and a green flame fell on the stone demon's body. This green flame is not the fire of the soul, but the bone fire of the dead. When this flame fell on the stone demon, the stone demon's body, which was originally made of pure stone, suddenly burst out with countless flames. Green flame patterns emerged from the body of the stone demon. These flame patterns soon spread all over the world. If you look closely, they look like the blood vessels of the stone demon, and the flow inside them also looks like green magma. This is the highest form of the stone demon, the flame stone demon. Do it all. Luo Lin stopped, and then he tapped Gunter lightly with his finger, and a special rune appeared between the eyebrows of Gunter's bird snake skeleton. This is the rune for controlling the stone demon. Normally, you don't have to operate it, and you don't have to waste your soul power. When someone breaks in, you won't be able to stop him from using the stone demon. This is the insurance that Roland added to the last line of defense for birds and the others. There is a stone demon here. Luo Lin felt that even if Voldemort himself came, he would be blocked for a while. At that time, he will also receive feedback from the stone demon at the same time, and he will decide whether to take action depending on the situation. Advertisement Chapter 81 Dumbledore was stunned. He felt a powerful force from the green fire-emitting stone man in front of him. This power is enough to pose a considerable threat to him. Luo Lin, is this the last resort you arrange? Dumbledore couldn't help but ask. Luo Lin nodded. Yes, this is the flame stone demon. It should be able to block the vast majority of wizards who covet the magic stone. Dumbledore twitched the corners of his mouth. More than just the majority. According to his assessment of the strength of the stone demon in front of him, he felt that there were only a handful of wizards in the world who could break through this stone demon. Of course, this only talks about hard power, not counting those special props or magic. How about Professor? My arrangement should be fine, right? Hearing Luo Lin's words, Dumbledore nodded repeatedly his beard trembling slightly. Of course, no problem, Luo Lin, you did a good job. I believe no one can break through here and enter the secret room. He knew that Luo Lin was very powerful, and he also knew that Luo Lin must have special means as a necromancer. Therefore, expectations for Luo Lin's arrangement are still very high. But Luo Lin's arrangement far exceeded his expectations. Having even found a powerful creature like the Stone Demon, he felt that he no longer had to worry too much about the safety of the Magic Stone. On the contrary, you may have to worry about what if someone breaks in here by mistake and is killed by the green fire stone man in front of you? It seems that we need to be reminded more after school starts. Otherwise, he is really afraid of naughty students who want to cause mischief. 
Seeing Dumbledore satisfied, Luo Lin nodded slightly. As long as I can meet your request, I'll be relieved. Then Dumbledore and Rowling left the Chamber of Secrets. Do it all. Dumbledore planned to invite Rowling to Hogsmeade for a drink, but Rowling declined. Luo Lin has not been drinking less during this period. He is now not interested in wine at all, just like playing cards. The next day, I wonder if I heard from Dumbledore that Luo Lin's matter has been settled. Professor Flittick actually came over to invite him to play cards. This time we don't have to stay in Luo Lin's dormitory. Instead, he chose to stay in Professor Flittick's dormitory. Looking at Professor Flittick's earnest eyes, Roland surrendered. He followed Professor Flittick to the dormitory, where Hagrid and Dumbledore were already there. See Dumbledore. Luo Lin instantly confirmed what he was thinking. Sure enough, it was Dumbledore who leaked the information about him. But what can be done? Come all come. Professor Flittick asked Rowling to decorate his dormitory. Advertisement after all, he had seen Luo Lin take out things from the storage space. I noticed that the three of them were looking forward to it. Luo Lin understands. He couldn't run away now. No way. He could only take out tables, chairs, and a bar from the space. By the way, I took out a dozen bottles of wine. Just not in his dormitory, he is not that grand. They strongly requested Dumbledore and the three of them to bring enough wine to refill next time after they finish drinking. After all, there is a lot of wine in his storage space. But we can't just keep going. Sooner or later, all the food will be finished. We have to think of ways to increase revenue and reduce expenditure. Presumably this kind of thing is not difficult for Hagrid, Professor Flittick, and Dumbledore, three people who all like to drink. Dumbledore and the others naturally agreed. Speaking of which, Professor Flittick was a little embarrassed. But I don't know how to compensate Luo Lin. It was Luo Lin who had been helping them for so long. So it was time for them to put in some effort. Professor Flittick decided to bring over some bottles of good wine and let Rowling taste his favorite wine. After it settled, Rowling started drinking and playing poker with Dumbledore and others. He completely forgot what he was thinking. From the look of him, it doesn't look like he's not interested in drinking and playing poker. Over the next 10 days, Luo Lin resumed his drunken life. But this time he had a little bit of a bottom line. Play cards only in the afternoon. In the morning, he would not go no matter who called him, but concentrated on studying the defense against the dark arts textbook. And without him, other professors in the school will step up. It can be said that the people playing cards at Professor Flittick's place are different every day. There are always two people always there. One is Professor Flittick and the other is rolling. Luo Lin has half a day every day. Professor Flittick is amazing. He's there every day. Logically speaking, always involved in poker. Professor Flittick would definitely have a lot more on his face. But as your poker skills improve, Professor Flittick's face looked much better than at the beginning. To the day before school starts. Advertisement there were actually less than 10 magic marks on his face. But others are different. There were probably dozens or hundreds of streaks on Dumbledore's face, and they were completely countless. This is not the one with the most. The one with the most was undoubtedly Hagrid. Apart from winning in Landlord, Hagrid never won in four-player poker every day. His face has been painted into a horrible look, and even his nostrils have various colors. In addition, his face is very large, and he can draw many magic marks, which causes the marks on his face to be superimposed and superimposed. At the end of the superposition, the various colors were mixed, and one of them turned directly into black. It's the one on his forehead. When I saw the black mark on my forehead, even Hagrid, who didn't pay much attention to his own image, felt a little like crying. But he had no choice. It was agreed to be two weeks, so it had to be two weeks. Dumbledore is no exception. How can a little Hagrid be an exception? Except for the professor who didn't come to the poker game. Almost no one was spared. Professor McGonagall only came to participate once, and by this time the mark on his face had disappeared. So when facing Dumbledore and others, she will raise her head unconsciously. Then I started to educate a few people. Let them not get bored playing with things. It is not good for students to see so many marks on their faces. It's a pity that only a few people listened. But it's already too late. It's time for school to start. Most of the professors in Hogwarts have turned into colorful faces. Luo Lin is naturally no exception. It can even be said that the mark on his face is second only to Hagrid. So the day before school starts, Luo Lin regretted it. Look at your colorful face in the mirror. He sighed. Why can't you resist the temptation? What to do now? Tomorrow's opening banquet will be attended by all professors. He also wants to show his face. When the time comes, Harry and the others will see him. Rowling couldn't even imagine what Harry would look like. And there are so many little wizards staring at them. 
which is really shameful. But who made him fall? Luo Lin felt extremely uncomfortable. He lay on the bed and stayed up half the night. Time quickly came to the next day. School starts at Hogwarts. Advertisement. Chapter 82. Luo Lin fell asleep very late. When he wakes up, it's almost noon. Because I am not the only one with this situation on my face. Luo Lin is now able to go to the auditorium to eat naturally. Because he could always meet one or several professors with marks on their faces in the auditorium. When he comes today, I met Professor Flittick. Professor Flittick seemed to be in a good mood. Luo Lin thought it was most likely because there were very few marks on his face. If the marks on his face were the same as mine, I'm afraid I won't be able to laugh anymore. Think of this. Luo Lin suddenly felt that his thoughts were a bit dark. Why couldn't he hope for some good from his colleagues? But then I thought about it. Colleagues can be good, but they can't be better than themselves. As the saying goes, if you are afraid of your brother's suffering, you are even more afraid of your brother's driving a Land Rover. This is probably what Luo Lin is thinking now. Professor Flittick was unaware of the evil thoughts in Rowling's mind. He warmly welcomed Luo Lin to have lunch with him. At the same time, the decoration of the auditorium has also begun. Prepare for the arrival of new students in the evening. Rowling also learned from Professor Flittick. Because the opening banquet in the evening is a formal dinner, it takes a long time. So the dinner at 6 o'clock in the evening is not available today. Professor Flittick asked Rowling to eat more first so that he would not have to wait until 8 o'clock to starve. Luo Lin is a very obedient person. He ate a lot. After eating, everyone returned to their dormitories. There is no poker session today. In other words, it is unlikely that there will be any poker sessions in the next semester. Although professors all like playing poker, but as a Hogwarts professor, he still has good self-control and knows what his most important responsibility is, so he doesn't get bored playing with things. Rowling taught you to take everything back from Flittick yesterday. All they have to do now is wait in the dormitory. We waited until the new students and old students came to report in the evening, and then held the opening banquet. This time the banquet was more formal. Roland also needs to wear more formal attire. Fortunately, he has quite a lot of clothes. Advertisement, it didn't take long to pick out a suitable outfit. It was a wizard's robe embroidered with mysterious patterns and a pointed hat. After changing it, he looked like an English gentleman, matching his handsome face. Luo Lin felt that if he appeared in front of a group of young girls, he would definitely be able to charm them. Of course, that's assuming there aren't a lot of magic marks on his face. It would be best if the dark circles under the eyes also disappear. Black stands on the cage. I saw Luo Lin praising his heroic appearance in front of the mirror. She was a little confused. Why did she feel that her master had become more and more narcissistic recently? Although it is an indisputable fact that the master is handsome, the master did not seem to care so much about his appearance in the past. Could it be a side effect of the necromancer? Or did the master change after coming to Hogwarts? Of course Roland didn't know what Blake was thinking. He stood in front of the mirror for a while and showed a helpless look. In fact, this is not his usual self at all. He mainly wanted to give himself a little confidence. Give yourself the courage to face everyone at the opening party. Forget it about the professors. Most of them are the same as him. But the little wizards will definitely pay close attention to them and it will be really embarrassing then. Especially the tall image he established in front of Harry and others might collapse suddenly. Think of that scene. Luo Lin felt that his heart had stopped. I couldn't help but regret it in my heart. Play cards. What a fart card. How could I be so depraved? So easily susceptible to temptation? If I had known this, why bother in the first place? There's no point regretting it now. Luo Lin encouraged himself, waiting for at most two weeks. The marks on his face will disappear completely. And the little wizards are all children, and they forget things as quickly as they remember them. After a while, the little wizards will definitely forget all this. Right? The afternoon passed quickly. It was getting dark. Hogwarts Express, Hogsmeade Station. Hagrid is already waiting here. He was actually a little impatient. Because he knew that Lily and James' son Harry would be here today. He and Harry had never met before, and out of curiosity, he wanted to see the child as soon as possible. It quickly became dark. Advertisement A siren also sounded not far away. The Hogwarts Express slowed down and was about to arrive at the station. On the train. In a carriage near the edge. Harry, Hermione, Ron, and Justin stayed here. The scene in the carriage was a bit strange. Harry took a seat. The other three people did not sit according to their positions, but surrounded him, listening to something. It seemed like this scene had been going on for quite some time. On Harry's shoulder, the sniffing skeleton held its head high and was giving directions. Uncle Malfoy told you, 
That little brat dared to call Malfoy just now. It was an insult to this name. You have to remember that from now on only Uncle Malfoy can be called Malfoy. That kid just now? Harry, what was the name of that kid just now? Harry replied helplessly. Draco Malfoy. Yes, from now on you can only call him Draco, never Malfoy. Otherwise, I will let you know what respect is. Do you understand? Malfoy said arrogantly. Ron and Justin nodded repeatedly. No problem, Uncle Malfoy. That nasty guy you just taught us a lesson. We all listen to you. Yes, from now on you will be the only Malfoy, and his name will be Draco. There was a hint of admiration in their eyes. When Harry saw the appearance of the two of them, he couldn't help but sigh. These two men are hopeless. Just now, Draco Malfoy heard that there was Harry Potter in this compartment and came over specially, but he was so rude. Harry hates him, and Ron and the others also hate Draco. Plus Draco provoked them after Harry refused to be friends with him. This made them want to take action. But Draco has two younger brothers, Crab and Goyle. They don't look like much of a match. At this moment, Sniffing Malfoy took action. This skeleton that they had always been curious about had wrongly spelled Draco's name. At the same time, he said, what kind of person do you deserve to be called by the same name as Uncle Malfoy? Draco was stunned. Crab and Goyle stepped forward to take action. He was also knocked to the ground by Malfoy. Draco and the others saw how powerful Malfoy was, so they had no choice but to accept the loss and run away. Ron and Justin, who had been the most angry just now, were grateful. They felt that if it wasn't for Malfoy, they would never be able to teach Draco a lesson. That's all. The two of them became Malfoy-sniffing fans. Advertisement Chapter 83 Ron and Justin adored Malfoy. Hermione was more curious. The reason why she appeared in this carriage. At first it was because he wanted to help Neville find his toad. But the toad was not found. Then she was attracted to the sniffing skeleton next to Harry. Of course Hermione had met Black and Longbottom even taking Longbottom to Diagon Alley. So see Malfoy. She instantly realized that this was Luo Lin's undead servant. Then she learned Harry's identity. This time, everyone in the carriage was focused on Harry and Malfoy next to him. Hermione didn't have any bad feelings with Ron and the others. But Hermione kept asking Harry questions. It still made Ron, a scumbag, a little uncomfortable. Harry is okay. He answered all Hermione's questions he could. Hermione was filled with envy after knowing that Malfoy was what Rowling had specially left for Harry to accompany him. How she wished she could be Harry. What a wonderful experience it is to be included in a book and receive special care from professors. She was determined to study hard and become a great wizard after entering Hogwarts. When the time comes, let your name appear on various books. As for the conflict between Malfoy and Harry Ron just now, Hermione watched the whole thing. I also think Malfoy is too annoying. Moreover, it was Malfoy and the others who provoked them first and almost took action. So although I am a little afraid of getting into trouble, Hermione still firmly stood on Harry's side. This also gave Harry and others a good impression of her. Several people are basically friends. The train is still moving, but at an extremely slow speed. Harry and the others realized that they were almost at their stop. No more surrounding Malfoy. Harry and the others also had to change into robes. By the time they had changed into their robes, the bus had arrived. It was completely dark by now. The passengers in the car were pushing and shoving, and they were all rushing towards the door. Advertisement Harry's side didn't feel crowded, because Malfoy directly separated them from others with soul power. They can move forward slowly in their own small space without worrying about being pushed aside by others. Malfoy was riding on Harry's neck, like a general on a war horse. Harry walked forward, while he waved his hands, with the aura of pointing out the country. He was actually commenting on the pets of those around him. That's a stupid cat. You can tell from the looks of it that its sole power is pitifully weak. This owl is not bad. The bones are much better looking than that idiot Blake's. Wow, that is such a beautiful owl. If the owner hadn't allowed it, I would have brought back its bones and dedicated them to the great owner. Listen to Malfoy's comments. Harry's head is so big. Mr. Malfoy, how about we keep a low profile? Low key? What is low key? Do I need to be low-key too? You kid. You underestimate me. Malfoy said arrogantly. Harry felt a little headache. But during this time he had figured out how to get along with Malfoy. Mr. Malfoy, if you keep doing this, you will get the professor into trouble. After all, the professor is teaching at Hogwarts, really? When he mentioned Rowling, Malfoy immediately calmed down. Since it's related to the master, it's not impossible for me to keep a low profile. Malfoy lowered his voice and felt a little unhappy. 
You humans are troublesome. It's better to be humans in Azkaban, where we can be free. Azkaban. It's Azkaban again. After this period of getting along, Harry had heard countless stories about Azkaban from Malfoy. At first he didn't know what Azkaban was, but he still listened to it with great interest. I think the place where Professor Rasma worked last was very unique. Later I read a book and learned that Azkaban is a wizard prison. Harry found that he could no longer look directly at what Malfoy said. Is life in prison that rich? How did the professor get along so well with those prisoners? Also, he had thought that some of the things Malfoy said were exaggerated. Now that I suddenly know that Azkaban is a prison, I suddenly realize that it is not necessarily an exaggeration. Is Azkaban really that weird? Harry thus developed a little interest in Azkaban, but more sympathy for those in Azkaban. If Mr. Malfoy wasn't lying, those prisoners are also blessed. Harry and his group soon arrived on the platform. The dark platform made it difficult to see clearly. Advertisement the weather was also a bit cold, and Harry couldn't help but shiver when the cold wind blew. Just then a light appeared above everyone's heads. A rough voice sounded, First year students, first year students, come over here. In the sea of people, countless people began to see the giant with the lamp. Under the illumination of light, the image of the giant is extremely strange. Even if he has a lot of beard, his face is actually painted colorfully, and his forehead is still black. If there is someone from the mysterious eastern country here, I will definitely comment on the previous sentence as the hall is darkened. Hagrid's image at this time was indeed a bit scary. So after he shouted it again, not even a few students dared to walk towards him. Harry and the others are a special case. With Malfoy's soul film protecting them, they could easily come to Hagrid. Hagrid immediately noticed Malfoy, and then also noticed Harry, who was regarded as his mount. He didn't bother to greet other freshmen and said hello to Harry first. Hello, Harry, I'm Hagrid, Rubius Hagrid. Harry was stunned for a moment, then responded. Hello, Mr. Hagrid. He didn't realize how kind Hagrid was to him. He just thought it was a normal greeting. Harry now has a certain understanding of his popularity in wizarding society. He will no longer feel strange when others greet him. After saying hello, Hagrid did not continue talking. His current duty is to take the new students to Hogwarts. As a conscientious worker, he naturally has to complete his work first. Come here, first years? Come here quickly, I will take you to Hogwarts, shouted again. The crowd just started to flow this way. Hagrid smiled and reminded. Be careful, first year students, don't slip. Harry and others followed Hagrid. Ron knew Hagrid and told everyone about Hagrid's situation, but they didn't pay much attention to Hagrid. Instead, look into the distance. Because they had turned a corner and passed the end of the narrow path. Saw the Black Lake. There is also a castle standing on the high hillside on the other side of the lake. There are countless spears on the castle, and countless windows shine in the moonlight. That's Hogwarts. Advertisement. Chapter 84. A moment of seeing Hogwarts. Rowling's figure appeared in Harry's mind. All over Hogwarts. Harry only knew Rowling. Wrong. There is also a Professor Quirrell, to be exact. But Harry's impression of Professor Quirrell was not very good. So I subconsciously ignored Professor Quirrell. Harry was now looking forward to meeting Rowling. He wanted to express his gratitude to Rowling. Rowling summoned Malfoy to accompany him, making him happy for a month. During this month, Malfoy did a lot of things. It also brought Harry a lot of fun. It can be said that Malfoy fulfilled the duties assigned to him by Rowling very well and accompanied Harry. Except for his slightly unique personality, Harry thought Malfoy was simply perfect. Without Malfoy's company, Harry couldn't imagine how boring he would be this month. Thinking back to the scene when he returned to Privet Drive, Harry still felt a little uncomfortable. Aunt Petunia, Uncle Vernon, and Dudley all but ignored him. To be more precise, I should say stay away from him and don't want to have anything to do with him. Even the meals are prepared for him alone, but compared to before, the Dudleys have also changed. At least the meals prepared for him taste much better than before. At this moment, Harry could somewhat understand the mood of his aunt and uncle, so I didn't pay much attention to it. It's just that being ignored all the time makes him feel very uncomfortable. Fortunately, Malfoy is there. Malfoy's bad character is most evident in the Dosleys. Except Harry, so to speak. Others are nothing at all in his eyes. If Harry hadn't been persuading him not to do anything too extreme, which might affect Lorraine, Malfoy might have turned the Dosleys into bones. Thinking of the experience during that time, Harry couldn't help but want to laugh. Advertisement after laughing, I felt a little uncomfortable. He actually didn't want to get along like this with his aunt and uncle. Deep down, he still longs for family affection and the care of his elders. 
But why can't his uncle and aunt give him any tenderness? Whenever Harry saw his aunt and uncle's love for Dudley, he couldn't help but feel sad in his heart. This was why he wanted so hard to escape from the Dosleys. Physical pain Harry could care less about, but the sadness in the soul cannot be erased. Notice that Harry was feeling a little down. Malfoy slapped him on the head. Kid, what's wrong? Are you thinking about that broken family again? What's good there? No one cares about you at all. It's better to come to Hogwarts. There is a great master here. If you become the master's servant like me, you will understand how supreme the master is. Malfoy said with feverish eyes. Harry came back to his senses and couldn't laugh or cry when he heard his words. Mr. Malfoy, you are truly loyal. No, that loser Black and Longbottom are definitely not loyal to me. Master will definitely understand my loyalty. Malfoy looked very proud and then added. By the way, when you see the master later, remember to say more good things about me, so that I can take care of you for so long. No problem, Mr. Malfoy. Thank you very much for this time. Harry nodded seriously. Malfoy laughed loudly. Kid, you are actually very good. After you die, I will definitely suggest that the master converts you into a soul servant. Then we will serve the master together. Harry twitched his lips. Mr. Malfoy, you are really thinking too far. But if that day comes, I should be very happy. That's right. That is my master. The supreme master. The supreme master of the undead in the endless world. Malfoy shouted. At this time they were walking towards the lake. Harry's voice was still relatively quiet and was masked by the noise around him. Malfoy was different. His voice was so loud that almost all the freshmen following Hagrid heard him. Some of them knew Harry's identity, while others who were better informed knew that Malfoy was Rowling's undead servant. The news quickly spread throughout the community of young wizards. Then Harry and his group received a lot of attention. Harry and others were a little uncomfortable. Although Ron and Justin admired Malfoy, they were still children and how could they withstand so many inquisitive and curious eyes? They lowered their heads and walked in a hurry, not looking out at all. Hermione was a little better. Although she was not used to this scene, she was very envious of it. It's just that this time everyone's eyes are not focused on her. So she didn't show too much excitement. What she thinks is that if she achieves great success in the future and thousands of eyes will focus on her alone, then she will definitely hold her head high to accept the attention of everyone. Advertisement Harry was the center of attention. His choice was the same as Ron's. Both of them kept their heads down. Malfoy still goes his own way. Not only did he accept everyone's attention, he even waved his bone claws from time to time. If Luo Lin saw him doing this, he might pick his toes in embarrassment. How come there is such a conspicuous package among my soul servants? Obviously he is so low-key. Hagrid walked in front. Naturally, he also heard Malfoy's words. He didn't pay much attention to it, but secretly sighed. He is worthy of being Professor Rasmus' sole servant. This character is really special. The freshman team became lively. The center of the excitement was Harry and his group. But soon they came to the river. Got on the boat. For people in a boat arrived under the castle in a short while. Hagrid held up a lantern to illuminate the road ahead. The little wizards followed him up from the underground pier and finally arrived on the grass in front of Hogwarts Castle, then climb up the stairs, arriving at the huge oak door. This is the gate to the castle. Hagrid raised his fist and knocked on the door three times. The door opened instantly. Professor McGonagall, a black-haired witch wearing an emerald green robe, appeared in front of Harry and others. Professor McGonagall looked quite serious. Harry felt that this serious professor must be difficult to deal with, and he became nervous unconsciously. I brought the first-year students. Professor McGonagall, Hagrid said. Thank you, Hagrid. Leave the rest to me. Professor McGonagall opened the door, revealing the first floor of Hogwarts Castle. Hagrid did not leave immediately. Instead, he came to Harry. Looking at the bearded giant approaching, Harry was a little confused. Mr. Hagrid? What can I do? No. Hagrid shook his head honestly. I just wanted to see more of you. Last time I saw you, you were still very young. You look like your dad but your eyes are more like your mom's. Harry understood that the relationship between the man in front of him and him was unusual. Advertisement. Chapter 85. Do you know my parents? Harry couldn't help but ask. Hagrid nodded. Of course, Lily and James, they are heroes, and I was the one who sent you to Privet Drive in the first place. I just didn't expect those two muggles to go so far. Harry knew that the two muggles Hagrid was talking about were Uncle Vernon and Aunt Petunia. He did not answer this sentence, but asked another question. Then do you know Professor Rasma? 
Harry asked about Roland, which made Hagrid a little surprised. But thinking that Harry was the one who sent the notice from Roland, he thought it was normal. Of course I know Professor Rasma. He is our famous person now. There is no one in the school who doesn't know him. Hagrid smiled. But compared to others, the relationship between Professor Rasma and I is relatively close. We are very good friends. He seemed a little proud when talking about this, and then pointed at Malfoy riding on his neck. Is this the undead servant of Professor Rasma? Harry hasn't answered yet. Malfoy had already answered. Yes, I am the sole servant of the great master. Since you are the master's friend, you can also call me Malfoy. Malfoy. Hagrid was stunned for a moment. He suddenly recalled the names of Luo Lin's other undead servants. Black, Longbottom, Malfoy. No matter how slow you are. Hagrid has also understood the logic of Luo Lin's naming. This is to take the names of all the 28 clans. Does Professor Rasma have 28 soul servants? Hagrid couldn't help but think. Hello, Mr. Malfoy. After coming back to his senses, Hagrid said hello to Malfoy. Malfoy nodded with satisfaction. Kid, this big guy only has good intentions for you. So you can rest assured. A flash of surprise flashed in Harry's eyes. He believed Malfoy's words. Malfoy showed his specialness some time ago. What impressed him most was Malfoy's ability to vaguely sense the good intentions and malice of others. Like Draco Malfoy before him. Although it started with good intentions. But when Harry rejected his kindness, good intentions turned to bad intentions in an instant. Malfoy told him this. That's why Harry disliked Draco so much. Advertisement no one will like this kind of person who will be malicious when others don't follow him. According to Malfoy, he is a naughty child who must be taken care of. Although Harry didn't quite understand why such a person would be called a naughty kid, he had to agree with it. A disgusting person like Draco needs someone to discipline him. Since Malfoy said that Hagrid was completely kind to him, then what Hagrid just said should also be true. Hagrid was also a little surprised. This was the first time he knew that Luo Lin's undead servants had this special ability. But with his character, he doesn't really care. Hagrid and Luo Lin are good friends. And they also know their parents. Harry unconsciously became closer to Hagrid. He felt that Hagrid should be his second acquaintance at Hogwarts. Hagrid wanted to say something else. Professor McGonagall is already about to leave. Seeing this, Hagrid waved his hand towards Harry. I'm leaving to find Professor Rasma first. I'll go to the auditorium later. We'll meet again at the opening banquet. After speaking, Hagrid left. A flicker of anticipation flashed in Harry's eyes. Will I see Professor Rasma in the auditorium soon? What a great news. Ron, Hermione and others had already heard the story about Roland and him from Harry. Harry was not surprised that he wanted to see Professor Rasma as soon as possible. Hermione even envied Harry a little. Why is Professor Rasma so nice to Harry? She remembered that when Luo Lin came to deliver her the notice and take her to Diagon Alley, he didn't give her any special treatment. Is it because Harry is a legendary child? If Rowling knew what Hermione was thinking, I will definitely tell her that she is thinking too much. In fact, his attitude towards young wizards such as Hermione, Harry and Justin is basically the same. Maybe because Hermione and Harry are the protagonists, they will pay a little more attention, but it does not affect his attitude. The reason for being so nice to Harry, it's because Hermione and Justin already live a happy life, and their parents are healthy and supportive of them. Luo Lin has no meaning in helping them in such a happy life. Harry was different. Harry's experience was so tragic. Instead of a happy life, he had to face endless suffering. Luo Lin is a school teacher. Advertisement you must help your students. At least until Harry was able to handle it on his own, he had a responsibility as a teacher. This responsibility may not be obvious enough in the UK. But for Luo Lin, that is the most basic responsibility. He would not go out of his way to help Harry. Just let Harry not be as miserable as before before enrolling. In fact, Harry even had the help of rolling. Life is far worse than Hermione and others. But because Malfoy is here, Harry is definitely much better than before. Professor McGonagall sets off. Harry and others followed her. Professor McGonagall took the first-year students to a small empty room, and everyone was crowded together. Malfoy originally planned to rush to find his master after arriving at Hogwarts. But just now he heard Hagrid say that he could meet the master at the opening party, so he wasn't too anxious anymore. Prepare to follow Harry and show his master the results of his mission. Harry doesn't have to be bullied these days, he eats much better than before, and has gained several pounds. For a child, it seems more obvious. Malfoy felt that if Luo Lin saw this scene, he would definitely praise him. And he has completed the task assigned to him by his master very well. 
and he must be better than that idiot Blake. Malfoy imagined the scene of being praised for a while, and it was hard to stop dancing. Harry endured a pile of bones moving around on his shoulder, causing a slight pain in his shoulder. Mr. Malfoy, could you please be quiet for a moment? I have some pain in my shoulder. Harry couldn't help but said. Malfoy stopped for a moment. Of course, no problem, as long as you say more good things about me to the master later. Malfoy brought it up again. Harry reluctantly reassured. Of course, Malfoy said nothing. Harry and others were protected by the film of Malfoy's soul power and did not feel the crowd around them. But that's exactly why. They received greater attention. Even Professor McGonagall couldn't help but look at Harry and the others a few more times. Needless to say about the rest. The envy in my heart is almost overflowing. Advertisement. Chapter 86. Ron and Justin noticed the envious looks from the people around them. He immediately raised his head, looking a little proud. Harry felt that it was too noticeable and was a little uncomfortable with it. Wait until all the little wizards have entered the room. Professor McGonagall spoke. Welcome to Hogwarts, everyone. The opening banquet will begin soon, but before you go to the restaurant to sit down, you must first confirm your branch. Sorting is a very important ceremony. When you are at Hogwarts, the college is your home. Professor McGonagall then introduced the four major colleges. Gryffindor, Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw, Slytherin. She told everyone that every college has a glorious history. Then he explained the Academy's points addition and subtraction rules, and the student with the highest score at the end of the year can win the Academy Cup. Finally, I encourage everyone to bring glory to the college. This is a very standard leadership speech. Luo Lin might fall asleep if he heard this. Harry and the others listened very carefully. Just take the opportunity to learn about Hogwarts. In a few minutes, the sorting ceremony will be held. You will go to the auditorium and be sorted into different schools in front of the entire school. All eyes will be on you then. I suggest that you look energetic and tidy up while waiting, Professor McGonagall said and glanced around below. Then the focus stopped on Harry's side. Mainly Harry's robes and hair that were messed up by Malfoy and the dirt on Ron's nose. Noticed her gaze. Harry suddenly became nervous. Professor McGonagall looked really serious, and he unconsciously wanted to do what Professor McGonagall said. So he discussed with Malfoy. Mr. Malfoy, can you get off me now? I need to tidy up my clothes and hair. Malfoy was very tolerant of Harry. Hearing Harry's thoughts, he floated in mid-air. Harry breathed a sigh of relief, then straightened out his wrinkled clothes and smoothed his hair vigorously. Ron was still clueless about the dirt on his nose. Everyone's attention in the car just now was on Malfoy and Harry. No one even reminded him that there was something dirty on his nose. To Professor McGonagall's gaze. Advertisement on the contrary. Ron seemed a little eager to try. He held his head high and wanted to express himself. Professor McGonagall didn't look much at it. Instead, he continued. Just wait here for a few minutes. Preparations are being made over there in the auditorium. I will come to pick you up when it is ready. By the way, please stay quiet while you wait. After saying that, Professor McGonagall left the small room. The serious Professor McGonagall left. The sound of breathing came one after another throughout the house. Many people breathed a sigh of relief. Harry was curious about how the sorting worked. But when he asked Ron, Ron wasn't sure. Harry was a little panicked now. When it comes to theoretical knowledge, Harry is not that bad now. It's not like he did nothing during this time. No longer suffering the abuse he suffered before, Harry basically spent his free time every day reading the textbooks he bought. Have a very basic understanding of things in textbooks. But in terms of practice, he doesn't know any magic at all. If he were to test the release of magic later, he would definitely be embarrassed. Except him. The others were also nervous. Because of some unspoken rules. Those who know how the houses are sorted will not tell the little wizards how to sort the houses. Even those pure blood families. They don't know much about the branch. It can be said that this is a kind of bad taste that arises spontaneously among students. So far, no one has broken this unspoken rule. Harry's nervousness continued. But thinking about being able to see Professor Rasmus soon, he was not so nervous. I have entered the magical world. It doesn't seem to matter which college I'm assigned to by then. It's unlikely that he will be asked to drop out after admission, right? Harry was very satisfied to be able to stay in school, learn magic, and become a wizard. Not to mention that there are good people like Professor Rasma in the school. Advertisement Harry just wishes he could study here for a few more years. Ah. Uh. Suddenly, Harry heard someone screaming behind him. Harry was startled, turned around and his eyes widened instantly. More than 20 ghosts appeared on the wall behind. 
These ghosts are translucent and glow with a pearly white color. After they appeared from the wall, they shuttled around the room, whispering to each other from time to time. As Harry listened to their words, his fearful mood suddenly became a little strange. They were actually talking about things related to Professor Rasma. Oh, God, we have the courage to show up here, just a few walls away from that monster. We are amazing, said a chubby monk ghost. This is something we must do every year. How can we be stopped by evil people? If possible, I even want to enter the auditorium. Another younger ghost spoke. The person next to him quickly covered his mouth. Shut up. You are risking your life. You don't know how terrifying that Rasma is. As long as we get a little closer to him, our power will weaken and be absorbed by it. That's a ghost-devouring devil. The ghost next to him nodded repeatedly, with a look of horror on his face. Even Blood Man Barrow lost half of his finger when he tried to get close to him. If we get close, he will eat us up. Then are we going to scare these little wizards this year? With the evil presence of Rasma, the little wizards will probably be frightened even worse after they enter school. The chubby monk ghost couldn't help but say. The rest of the people agreed very much. Yes, that kind of evil power should not appear in Hogwarts at all. Dumbledore doesn't know what he thinks. This place has simply become a hell of ghosts. Right? Do you think we can send Peeves to that devil? Peeves will definitely become honest by then. There are ghost proposals. Immediately, a ghost retorted. No, although Peeves has done a lot of mischief, he is not worthy of death, so we should expel him. The ghost suddenly discussed whether to expel Peeves or send Peeves to Luo Lin. Harry listened to their conversation below and was a little confused. What are these ghosts talking about? What does it mean that Professor Rasma is a devil and an evil existence? It's just nonsense. These ghosts don't understand anything at all and are completely biased against Professor Rasma. If they were willing to take a closer look at Professor Rasma, you will definitely know that the professor is a pure good person. He is the gentlest person in the world. Harry thought, unconvinced. Advertisement. Chapter 87. Harry didn't understand these ghosts. I just simply don't like the bad things they say. These ghosts are constantly communicating. Some of the little wizards looked at them with interest and found them very novel. The ghosts didn't pay attention to the first year wizard below, but after a voice appeared, they disappeared through the wall. Okay, the ceremony of the three houses is about to begin. I hope you are all ready. Professor McGonagall's voice floated in everyone's ears. She's back. Now follow me and go to the auditorium together. Then Harry and others followed Professor McGonagall to the auditorium. Harry was amazed by the splendor of the Great Hall. He also saw the people sitting on the four long tables below. But what he paid most attention to was the top table in the restaurant. There is a long table on the stage. This is where the Hogwarts staff sit. At the center is Dumbledore. Harry only glanced at him, then ignored him and began to look for Professor Rasma. Soon he saw Professor Rasma and the big Harry from before at the edge of the table. Harry looked at the familiar figure wearing wizard robes and couldn't help but feel a little excited. Finally I saw Professor Rasma again. I wonder if Professor Rasma will notice him and look in his direction, etc. When he saw Rollins' face, Harry finally realized something was wrong. Start with Dumbledore. Every professor he saw seemed to have something painted on his face, just like Hagrid. But before he could take a closer look, Professor McGonagall had already brought them to the stage, asking them to face hundreds of faces on the four long tables with their backs to the professor. The picture in Harry's mind was still Professor Rasma's colorful face. Luo Lin sat on the edge of the long table on the stage, next to Hagrid. He had kept his head down, not wanting everyone to see his face. Even the faces of most people on this long table already have many marks. He was still reluctant to show his current face in front of many young wizards. Just now, advertisement, everyone came to the auditorium and found their seats to sit down and wait for the opening banquet. Most of the little wizards couldn't help but exclaim, because they found that the professors they were familiar with had changed their appearance. The face is covered with colorful things, which looks very strange. Even the great legendary wizard they respected, Principal Dumbledore, was the same. There are even more marks on the face. Only the less popular Professor Snape and the strange Professor Trelawney looked the same as before. There were very few marks on Professor Flitwick's face. The little wizards who have just returned to school don't quite understand why they haven't seen each other during the summer vacation. This is what professors have become. They can only ask about small stories left in the school. But the little wizard who stayed in school didn't know much. They only know that the professors will play games together and the loser will have a magic mark painted on his face. 
This made the little wizard who had just returned extremely curious, especially the little wizards of Ravenclaw. They really wanted to find out what kind of game the professors were playing, and they were actually willing to let themselves become like this. At the same time, they also had another idea. Can they also play a game, and the punishment is face painting? Luo Lin didn't know what these little wizards were thinking, but he heard the exclamation, knowing that little wizards must be curious about the marks on their faces. That was one of the reasons he didn't want the students to see his face. Students are always willing to get to the bottom of things. If they know that the more marks on their faces, the worse they will lose. Luo Lin has no doubt that this group of students will create a ranking list in the school, ranking the person with the most face paint at the top. In this way, the top spot is undoubtedly Hagrid. For the subsequent second and third places, Luo Lin was a strong contender. Luo Lin also wanted to use a positive image to appear in front of many students, although he also knew that he no longer had a positive image. He is a necromancer after all. He is also a well-known necromancer in the British Wizarding Society. Escaped from Azkaban, the Daily Prophet has already written that he will be a professor at Hogwarts. This might have a hard time affecting admissions to Hogwarts, but it will definitely affect the attitude of the little wizard's parents. Parents of little wizards will definitely describe Rollins' evil image in front of their little wizards. But Luo Lin thinks these parents may be counterproductive. Advertisement children are always rebellious and full of curiosity. Basically, they do whatever you don't want them to do. The same goes for Luo Lin. The more parents prevent their children from contacting Roland, the more children will find ways to contact Roland. Because they'll think it's cool. During these days, Luo Lin realized this deeply. At the beginning in the auditorium. Those students are just ready to make a move, but no one has actually taken the initiative to communicate with him. Later he came to the auditorium more often. There were actually little wizards who came over to chat with him or ask him questions. Fortunately, these are all questions about Luo Lin, not academic issues. Otherwise, Luo Lin felt that he would make a fool of himself. This is the rebellious psychology of children, but it's not true that their parents did anything wrong. It can only be said that rebellion is very difficult to solve. Basically, it depends on the children's self-consciousness. And in Hogwarts, the most conscious one is Hufflepuff and the least conscious one is Ravenclaw. Luo Lin couldn't remember how many Ravenclaws he had chatted with. They seem to be a collective animal. After the first person runs over, a group of people will run over together. And their thinking is very fast. Luo Lin failed to keep up with their thinking several times. But he also quite liked these students. They are very simple and don't make him feel annoying. So let's talk about Luo Lin's so-called positive image. That is, other people are willing to contact him and will not reject his image too much. And if his face is covered with paint, others knew what the marks on his face meant, and they also knew that he was the first to bring this about. Then his image will definitely plummet. Luo Lin had this idea, so he didn't want too many young wizards to see his face. Most other wizards have no such concerns. Dumbledore looked particularly calm sitting on the golden chair in the middle. Even if Hagee and Tang turns black, I don't think there's anything wrong. The other professors were the same as usual. Luo Lin looked around and found that he was the only one who was more ashamed. This is embarrassing. The key is that it is still difficult for him to overcome his own psychology. Especially after looking up inadvertently and noticing Harry's gaze. Advertisement. Chapter 88. Rowling didn't know what Harry was thinking. But he could see the surprise in Harry's eyes. Now he really wants to go back to the person he was before he even thought about playing poker, stop himself from playing poker, or at least stop the punishing behavior of painting something on his face. Can it be painted somewhere else where it can't be seen? His image in Harry's eyes should be completely ruined now. This so-called image does not refer to other aspects of image, but only refers to one's own appearance. Luo Lin really doesn't care what others think of him in other aspects. The key is that he is obviously a handsome man. As a result, he had so many things painted on his face that he turned into a weirdo. No matter how you think about it, it makes you feel uncomfortable. This wasn't just about Harry at all. But since Harry had such a reaction, it meant that others would not be too different. I can only say that it is too late to regret. Luo Lin had no expression on his face, looked at the back of the new student, and sighed quietly. The next period of time, the mark on his face still wouldn't go away. This means that he has to teach young wizards with these things on his face. Think about that scene. Luo Lin just wanted to tear his face off and put it back on again when time passed, etc. It doesn't seem impossible. For a necromancer, it is not difficult to change his face, and it is not even very difficult to change his head, let alone cut off his face first. But think about it. Luo Lin gave up the idea. Because it's a bit too scary to cut your face off. 
After all, he is also a professor at Hogwarts, and he cannot do such things that would frighten children. You definitely can't pick your face. But he also had new ideas. You can't dig your face out, but you can cover it with something. Isn't it okay as long as you don't let others see what's on your face? Anyway, the agreement at that time was that he was not allowed to take the initiative to remove the marks on his face. I didn't say you couldn't block it with something. The simplest thing is to wear a mask and cover your face tightly. As long as he puts on the mask, who can see the face under the mask? Don't mention that there will be a lot of colorful magic marks on your face by then. Even if your face is painted pure black, no one else can see it. The more Luo Lin thought about it, the more he thought this idea was wonderful. Such a simple idea. Why didn't you think of that before? My thinking is still a bit rigid. Something that could be solved by a mask had worried him for such a long time. Advertisement Luo Lin felt it was inappropriate. He should think more in the future so that he can solve the problem. After thinking about covering my face, Luo Lin felt a lot more relaxed instantly. Don't draw too much attention tonight, just keep a low profile. Can't let too many people notice his face tonight. Wait until school officially starts tomorrow. Just cover your face. When the time comes, the little wizards won't be able to see his face and naturally they won't know how many marks there are on his face. To be honest, this move is a bit deceptive. After all, as long as the face is covered, there is obviously something on the face. But Luo Lin didn't want others to know whether there was something on his face, he just didn't want others to know how many marks he had been painted on. Because that way you can intuitively see how many times he has lost. And it was so ugly that he didn't want to show his face. Luo Lin felt that his plan was perfect. It will be implemented after today's banquet is over. As a necromancer, making fake faces is so easy. He can make a fake face out of any piece of meat. But for comfort, Luo Lin still hopes to use special skin to make fake faces. Whether it is human skin or the skin of certain animals, they are all suitable. Just when Luo Lin was thinking about something, Professor McGonagall has brought a four-legged stool and placed it in front of the little wizards. Then he placed a wizard's hat on the four-corner stool. The wizard's hat looked very worn, patched, badly worn, and a little dirty. If such a wizard hat was placed in the muggle world, no one would pick it up if it was thrown on the ground. But Professor McGonagall placed him on the stool so solemnly. This made many freshmen aware of the special nature of this hat. Luo Lin also heard the sorting hat singing at this time. You may think I'm not pretty, but never judge a book by its cover. If you can find a prettier hat than mine, I could eat myself. The sorting hat singing is pretty good, not unpleasant. But a mouth popped out of one of the hats and sang. It still gave a huge shock to many young wizards of muggle origin. Harry is okay. Advertisement he has met Black, Longbottom, and Malfoy. These three undead servants are no less magical than the yard hat. At this moment Malfoy was still riding on his neck. I don't know that the school has no regulations in this regard. Or was Professor McGonagall deliberately ignoring Malfoy? Anyway, after sorting out my clothes before, Malfoy returned to his shoulder again. But this time Malfoy didn't mess up his clothes or hair, said to be riding on his neck. In fact, there was no contact between the two parties. Harry didn't feel any pressure on his shoulders either. Rowling naturally noticed Malfoy. Malfoy was also seen following Harry on stage. At first he didn't want to look up, so he didn't pay much attention to Malfoy. Later, when I saw Harry, I discovered Malfoy's figure. Originally, he wanted Malfoy to come directly to him, so as not to affect Harry. But now he wants to be more low-key and not want to attract attention. So I didn't bother to let Malfoy come back. Let's go find Harry and bring Malfoy back during the meal. The Sorting Hat song continues. It describes the situation of the four major colleges. Brave and courageous Gryffindor. Honest and loyal Hufflepuff. A shrewd Ravenclaw. There is also the wise and knowledgeable Slytherin. It can be said that the Sorting Hat is a very official thing. It only talked about the advantages and characteristics of each college but did not talk about the shortcomings of each college. Luo Lin listened very casually. He doesn't need to wear the sorting hat, so naturally he doesn't care about this. Harry and the others were much more serious, because there is quite a lot of information revealed in the sorting hat. When they are sorted, they only need to put on the sorting hat and do not need to do anything else. The sorting hat will take the initiative to assign him to a house that suits him. Ron on the side was also surprised. He also didn't expect that all he had to do was put on a hat. I couldn't help but gritted my teeth. I want to kill Fred. He actually told me that the branch was going to fight a giant, which made me worry for such a long time. Everyone understands the method of sorting. Only then did I realize it was so simple. Many of the previous worries were unnecessary. At this time, 
Professor McGonagall stood in front of the hat, holding a roll of parchment in his hand. Whoever's name I call now will put on the hat, sit on the stool, and let the hat be sorted. Hannah Abbott. Advertisement. Chapter 89. Hannah Abbott. After Professor McGonagall read out the name, a little girl stumbled out of the team. She wears two golden braids, which sway when she runs, and she is very youthful and energetic. Saw this little girl. Luo Lin's heart moved. This is Hannah Abbott, Old Tom's granddaughter. Old Tom once asked him to pay more attention to Hannah Abbott in school. He also agreed to Old Tom. That being the case, Luo Lin took a few more glances at Hannah Abbott and memorized her appearance so that he could follow her in the future. Hannah Abbott was soon at the stool. She put the hat on her head and sat on the stool. Hufflepuff. After a moment of pause, had announced the results of the sorting. The people at the Hufflepuff table below immediately cheered. After Hannah Abbott took off her hat, she sat down at the Hufflepuff table. Susan Burns. Hufflepuff. Justin Finch Fletchley. Hufflepuff. Students go up one after another. Find out the result of your sorting. When some students go up, the sorting hat will call out their names immediately. Some students need to sit for a while before the sorting hat gives the answer. Soon it was Hermione's turn. Hermione couldn't wait. He hurried over and was sorted into Gryffindor. Neville was still as panicked as in the original book and was sorted into Gryffindor. There is no outside involvement. Everyone's branch was the same as Luo Lin's impression. Malfoy's Slytherin. Harry and Ron are both Gryffinders. Among them, Harry was the last to go up. His appearance also caused a sensation among the little wizards. People poked their heads around, hoping to see clearly what he looked like and to know which college he would be assigned to. When the sorting hat announced that Harry was sorted into Gryffindor, the loudest cheers and applause so far erupted in the auditorium. Advertisement the Weasley twins were the most excited. They shouted loudly, We have Potter! We have Potter! Harry didn't understand why they were so excited. As he sat at the Gryffindor table, he finally had time to take a good look at the entire auditorium, especially the guest of honor seat on the stage. Harry looked towards the seat of honor, confirmed that he had read correctly just now. These professors at the guest of honor table all have marks on their faces. Professor Rasmus' face is no exception, and it seems to be the one with more faces. Except Roland. Harry only knew Hagrid and Dumbledore at the guest of honor, and maybe Quirrell. Hagrid was someone he had just met, but she was very friendly to him. After noticing his gaze, she gave him a thumbs up and seemed to be smiling happily. Dumbledore was a picture he saw on the train. There is almost no difference between the Dumbledore in the picture and the one seen with the naked eye now. He didn't have much of an impression of Dumbledore. All I know is that this is the principle of Hogwarts and a legend in the wizarding world. As for Professor Quirrell, he was really not familiar with him at all and had no intention of dealing with him. Of all the people, Harry was naturally the most concerned about Rowling. But Roland rarely looks up now. He also had no intention of interacting with Harry. After Harry took a few more glances, he began to observe other things. He was curious about Hogwarts as a whole. After all, this is where he will spend the most time in the next few years. Just like what Professor McGonagall just said. This place is no different from his other home. And maybe this home is much better than the one he originally stayed in. At least Professor Rasma is here. And at this time, the sorting hat also read Ron's name. Ron was the second to last person to wear a hat. After being sorted into Gryffindor, he ran over to Gryffindor excitedly and collapsed on the chair next to Harry. After the last Blaze Chibini is assigned, sorting is over. Professor McGonagall took the sorting hat and the student list and left. Sorting is over. Finally, it was Dumbledore's turn as the principal. With a gentle smile on his face, Dumbledore looked at the students below, opened his arms, and looked couldn't be happier. If it weren't for the countless colorful magic marks on his face, freshmen may have a much better impression of him. Advertisement now, all the freshmen have noticed the marks on the faces of these professors in the guest chair. Little wizards from muggle families are fine. I just thought it was a tradition for Hogwarts professors to start school. The expressions on the faces of those little wizards who came from wizarding families were a little strange. They just can't figure it out. Why would these respected professors at Hogwarts smear these things on their faces? They are wizards. It's not shamanism. The key is that some professors have it on their faces, and some professors don't. Now the professors with no marks on their faces stood out. Dumbledore didn't care about the marks on his face. He looked at the many students happily and gave a leadership speech. Welcome. Welcome everyone to Hogwarts to start the new school year. The opening banquet is about to begin. Before that, I have a few words to say. That is, idiot. Cry. Residue. Screw it. Thank you everyone. 
This leadership speech is really short. The little wizards below cheered and applauded because they didn't have to listen to nonsense. But basically no one can understand the meaning of Dumbledore's meaningless words. Even Roland is the same. When he saw this place in his previous life, he couldn't understand it at all. After searching online, some said that the characteristics of each college correspond to these four words, and some said that this is each college's view of other colleges. Anyway, it's a mess and there is no unified conclusion. It's no wonder that little wizards sometimes think Dumbledore is a little crazy. This may be the special little personality of the legendary wizard. But Rowling liked Dumbledore's speech very much. This can be said to be the shortest leadership speech he has ever heard. You must know that the general leadership speeches are smelly and long, and do not have any substantive content. If everyone could speak as briefly as Dumbledore, I don't know how much time would be saved. Dumbledore finished speaking. The opening party has begun. Rich meals appeared on the five long tables. Luo Lin couldn't help but glance down. Those house elves downstairs are really working hard, but those little elves were happy with it. Looking at the pile of food in front of me, Luo Lin couldn't wait to pick up the fork. Tonight is the opening party. The meals are much richer than usual. There are even more types of food. Luo Lin ate a little less at noon in order to eat more at night. He put some of everything he wanted on his plate and started enjoying his delicious dinner. Advertisement Chapter 90 Luo Lin ate happily. Harry and others also enjoyed their meal very happily. Harry had never had such a sumptuous meal. Even the meal that Professor Rasma took him to the hotel that day was far less varied than today's opening banquet. It was just a Turkish meal after all. The opening banquet has meals from all over the world. Certainly. For Harry, it was the food he ate with the professor that impressed him the most and found it most delicious. The opening party is a grand party for Hogwarts. Everyone ate with open stomachs. Everyone was chatting while eating. Hagrid told Rowling about the conversation with Harry just now. It was obvious that Hagrid was happy to see Harry. Wait until everyone is almost full. The food on the table suddenly disappeared. The tableware also became as clean as ever. Then after a while, countless desserts appeared on the table. Various flavors of ice cream, apple pie, chocolate sponge cake, strawberry, jelly, everything. The little wizards also started chatting. Harry listened to the chats of the people around him and got to know Neville, Hermione and others. They talked about their next studies. Looking forward to the life after learning magic, Harry couldn't help but look up at the guest seat. Professor Rasma and Hagrid are drinking. Dumbledore and Professor McGonagall were chatting, apparently about the marks on their faces. Harry didn't know much about the other professors. So he looked at Professor Quirrell, whom he had met once before. This professor, who he thought was a bit nervous, still had a purple scarf on his head, which looked very strange. Advertisement, just when he looked at Professor Quirrell, the hook-nosed teacher who was talking to Professor Quirrell happened to look at him. And right at this moment, Harry suddenly felt a burning pain on the scar on his forehead. Oh, it hurts. Harry suddenly covered his forehead. Seeing his look, Ron couldn't help but asked with concern. What's wrong, Harry? Nothing. At this time, the pain on Harry's forehead had disappeared, but he did not dare to look at Professor Quirrell anymore, but asked Percy on the other side, Percy, do you know who the teacher was who was talking to Professor Quirrell? Percy ate a piece of pudding, turned his head and looked at it, then said casually, Oh, that's Professor Snape, Professor of Potions and Head of Slytherin. Harry frowned. Professor Snape? Why doesn't he look like a good person? Percy laughed when he heard his words. I didn't expect Harry to have the same idea. In fact, many students in Hogwarts think that he is not a good person, except Slytherin. As he spoke, he lowered his voice. Actually, there is another rumor. People say that he is not willing to teach potions, but hopes to teach defense against dark arts. After all, he has deep attainments in dark arts. Defense against the dark arts? Harry was shocked and couldn't help but said, Isn't that the position of Professor Rasma? Percy nodded. Yes, the position of the necromancer is now decided by Dumbledore himself. But even if Professor Rasma is not the professor of defense against the dark arts, it will not be Professor Snape's turn, because there is still Professor Quirrell. Although Professor Quirrell has changed a lot, he is also very familiar with dark magic. Okay. Hearing that Snape actually coveted the position of Professor Rasma, coupled with the pain from the scar on his forehead just now, Harry immediately felt a slight sense of hostility towards Snape. In his heart, Professor Rasma is the biggest good person in Hogwarts. Snape actually wants the position of Professor Rasma, which is too much. He couldn't help but look at Snape again, but Snape never looked at him again or even spoke to Professor Quirrell again. 
Harry suddenly thought of something and asked Malfoy on his shoulder. Mr. Malfoy, did you feel anything unusual just now? For him, the person he trusts the most now is Malfoy, and Malfoy is also the most capable. Here his questions. Advertisement Malfoy, who was a little bored, became energetic. I felt a soul wave just now, but it was too weak and disappeared quickly, so I didn't tell you. Soul fluctuation? Harry didn't know much about undead magic. Well, you probably won't understand it even if you tell me. But that soul wave is malicious towards you. So you should be more careful in the future, Malfoy reminded. Harry looked as if that was indeed the case. I thought to myself, sure enough, Professor Snape has bad intentions towards me. Otherwise, how could it be such a coincidence that his soul would fluctuate just when he saw his eyes, and it would be a malicious soul fluctuation? It seems that Professor Rasma must be reminded to be careful in the future. It may be dangerous if such a villain is eyeing his position. Harry began to worry about Lorraine, just when he was thinking about how to tell Luolin about this. The desserts on the table also disappeared. The dinner party is completely over. Dumbledore, who was sitting on the golden chair, stood up again. Saw him get up. The entire auditorium returned to silence. Dumbledore still had the same smile. Everyone has eaten and drank enough. Today's banquet is almost over. But I still have some words to tell everyone. These are very important and everyone should keep them in mind. First of all, first-year students need to know that no one is allowed to enter the woods on campus. This is a school rule. Some of our old students should also remember this. Harry noticed that Dumbledore glanced in their direction as he said his last words. Following his gaze, Harry discovered that they were Ron's two twin brothers, Fred and George. He had heard Percy say that these two were naughty men before. It seemed that Percy was right. Even Dumbledore would remind them of this. But judging from how unconcerned the two of them are now, they probably didn't listen. After saying the first thing, Dumbledore continued. Secondly, the administrator, Mr. Filch, also asked me to remind everyone not to release magic in the corridor after class. In addition, the review of Quidditch players will be carried out in the second week. If there are students who are willing to join the college team, you can sign up with Mrs. Huachi. Last and most important. Speaking of this, Dumbledore's expression became more serious than ever before. Everyone needs to pay attention. If you don't want to encounter an accident, injury, or even death, you must never enter the corridor on the right on the fourth floor. I'm not kidding everyone, not even just the freshmen, I'm talking about everyone, including the senior students and professors. If you break into that place, even I won't be able to save you in time. Advertisement Chapter 91 Dumbledore finished speaking. There was some scattered laughter below. They didn't seem to believe what Dumbledore said. Harry also asked Percy quietly, Dumbledore must be joking, right? Percy shook his head. Not likely. Then he frowned. But it's a little strange. In the past, whenever we were not allowed to go, he would always tell us the reason. This time he didn't say anything, but he was more serious than ever. I really don't understand. He should have told us the reason. At least he should have told us the prefects. Harry mused. The corridor on the right on the fourth floor? So what exactly do you have? Why not be allowed to go? But he's not a particularly curious person. Since there is danger, just don't go. As long as he didn't get close there, he wouldn't be in danger. At the guest of honor table, Rowling paused when he heard Dumbledore's words. How could Dumbledore be so serious? Except for Harry and his party, the little wizard shouldn't be able to break in, right? And if Harry and the others go in, basically it means Voldemort is onto something. Dumbledore should be paying attention to them at that time and there is a high probability that there will be no danger. Rowling couldn't understand why Dumbledore was so serious. He didn't think of the flame stone demon he summoned at all. After all, what Dumbledore didn't know was, the first moment his soul servant encounters an invasion by others, he will use the communication between souls to inform him of the news. There is a soul module. Gunter and birds can still contact him through the soul module, even if they are on the other side of the earth. So he never thought that the sole servant he placed would harm anyone except the intruder. Just receive communication from Gunter. Luo Lin will definitely go to see the fun. If something really happened to the little wizard, could he, as a professor, not save him? Luo Lin felt that Dumbledore was unfounded. Dumbledore felt that his instructions were not enough. Because some of the little wizards below still don't care. For the first time, he put on a straight face. Everyone, I repeat, what I just said is no joke. The corridor on the right side of the fourth floor is very dangerous. It is definitely not a place you can go to at will. It is a hundred times more dangerous than the Forbidden Forest. If you don't want your parents to lose their children and be heartbroken, 
You must not go near it. Of course, if you insist on pursuing death, there is nothing I can do. Advertisement he finished speaking. Both students and professors now understood the importance of the matter. Hagrid couldn't help but be a little surprised. He knew what was in the right corridor on the fourth floor, and his Lu Wei was there. I just didn't expect Dumbledore to be so careful. He didn't know that Luo Lin had put his little pet in it, but he just thought that Dumbledore was very concerned about the safety of the students, so he emphasized it specifically. Professor Snape frowned. He glanced at Rowling calmly, and then quietly glanced at Harry at the Gryffindor table. His face was as gloomy as ever, and he didn't know what he was thinking. Professor Quirrell looked a little scared, which was in line with his timid setting. But when he lowered his head, a rich black light flashed deep in his eyes, revealing a sense of evil. The little wizards all had their own reactions. Dumbledore's unprecedented seriousness made them no longer as relaxed as before. But most of the little wizards didn't care after being surprised. They wouldn't have violated school rules anyway. Only Fred, George and others looked at each other, seeing the worry and eagerness in each other's eyes. Seeing that all the little wizards took his words seriously, Dumbledore's smile returned to his face. Okay, the heavy topic is over, and the opening party is coming to an end. Before everyone goes to the dormitory to sleep, let's sing the school song together. The smile returned to his face. The smiles on other professors' faces froze. Luo Lin looked at Hagrid with some confusion and asked in a low voice, What's wrong? Everyone doesn't seem very happy? Hagrid shrugged. You'll find out soon. Subsequently, Dumbledore picked up his wand and waved it lightly. Golden ribbons floated out of the wand. The ribbon is very long, floating in the air, twisting and twisting to form lines of text. The text is the school song of Hogwarts. Everyone chooses his or her favorite tune, starts, and sings. Dumbledore shouted. The old students and professors sang loudly and skillfully. Hogwarts, 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 please give us knowledge. Whether we are an old man with a bald head or a child with a broken knee. Advertisement we will study hard. Until it turns into dung. Although everyone sang the same lyrics. But everyone sang in a different tone, which seemed a bit confusing. Luo Lin doesn't like singing very much. The main reason is that his voice is terrible. How bad is it? If he was so bad that he sang in KTV in his previous life, his friends would hide away faster than the wizards in this world when they see him as a necromancer. Either go to the toilet, or go out to smoke. Only a few friends wearing headphones would applaud him expressionlessly. That experience dealt a huge blow to Luo Lin. He made a vow from then on. Unless his friends come together to beg him, he will reluctantly sing. Then, he never went to KTV to sing again. This is a sad story. Roland also sang a sad tune. When he finished singing, he noticed that Hagrid was looking at him with wide eyes, with disbelief in his eyes, combined with the black mark on his forehead. No matter how you look at it, it's funny. Luo Lin couldn't help but cover his face. Looking at Hagrid's expression, he already knew how good his singing was. Never mind. I will never sing again. Hagrid found that Luo Lin was a little sad. He suddenly realized that his actions seemed a bit hurtful and couldn't help but comfort him. It's okay, Professor Rasma. You've done a great job in everything except singing. Luo Lin just wanted to tell Hagrid, don't comfort people if you don't know how to comfort them. He feels even more uncomfortable now, so it would be better not to comfort him. Of course this is all a sideshow. Except for Harry who kept peeking at Luo Lin from below. No one noticed what was happening here. Dumbledore directed Fred and George to sing the school song with the funeral march and then gave them warm applause. Music is more charming than anything we do here. Dumbledore couldn't help but shed tears in the corners of his eyes. The tears he felt at that time represented his love for music. Wiping away his tears, Dumbledore smiled again. Everyone, it's bedtime. Let's go back to the dormitory. Advertisement. Chapter 92. The opening party is about to end. Harry reluctantly said goodbye to Malfoy. Follow Percy and head to the dormitory. Malfoy didn't look reluctant at all. He was extremely excited now. Running among the crowd, heading in the direction of Luo Lin. Many little wizards looked curiously at a skeleton. Xiu Xiu, shouting, Master, I am here and then ran towards the guest of honor seat above. Malfoy's excited voice was heard. Luo Lin, who was saying goodbye to Hagrid, was stunned for a moment, and then covered his face again. Malfoy's voice was really too loud. Luo Lin estimated that all the young wizards and professors would turn their attention to him. He really didn't want to bear these looks. After all, his plan was to keep a low profile and then go back and make a mask to wear. But things went counterproductive. In order to keep a low profile, 
he didn't even think of saying hello to Harry, just to avoid attracting attention. But despite all calculations, the conspicuous package of Malfoy was missed. How to say? The situation is very embarrassing now. Malfoy yelled for his master and rushed towards Roland. Luo Lin covered his face, looking shameless in front of others. Hagrid felt strange being there, but he still said hello to Malfoy. Snape stared at Rowling and Malfoy not far away. Especially when seeing Malfoy, his whole person became more gloomy. Luo Lin originally had two undead around him, but he couldn't accept it anymore, and now there's one more. Who knows how many undead people Luo Lin, the necromancer, will stuff into the school in the future. If Rowling's undead are endless, then is it the wizards or the undead who call the shots at Hogwarts? Will Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry be changed to Hogwarts School of the Dead in the future? Or should we hire these undead as professors and then let Luo Lin be the principal? Snape had imagined countless images in his mind that disgusted him to the extreme. He snorted coldly, turned around and left without saying goodbye to Professor Quirrell. Professor Quirrell stared at Malfoy with great interest. A trace of greed flashed unconsciously in his eyes, but he quickly lowered his head to cover it up. In fact, Many people have already noticed Malfoy riding on Harry's shoulders. But Malfoy was very quiet at that time, and not many people paid attention to him. At this time, Malfoy had no scruples and strode around the auditorium with impunity. An undead was so arrogant in the wizard's room. Some people couldn't help but feel disgusted with him. There are also some people who are very interested in him. Advertisement not only interested in him, but also interested in all of Luo Lin's undead servants. Like Professor Bin's. He once asked Roland to communicate with Black and Longbottom. What exactly they talked about, Luo Lin didn't ask. He didn't let Black and Longbottom tell him either. Since then anyway, Professor Binns had more respect for Luo Lin. So even though Professor Binns doesn't really like them getting together to play poker, never said anything. Instead, I later became interested in poker and kept watching. Of course, as a ghost, he could only watch. Now everyone knows that Luo Lin has one more undead servant beside him. But most of the professors didn't think it was a big deal. Especially professors who frequently participate in card games. They are already familiar with Luo Lin, know Luo Lin's character, and know that he is not the undead wizard in the legend. In addition, Longbottom and Black often acted as waiters at the card games, serving them tea and water. It gave them a very good impression of Luo Lin's soul servant. Naturally, Luo Lin would not be excluded from having another soul servant. Develop according to this situation. Luo Lin felt that the day when he could summon all his soul servants was just around the corner. Just get all the professors. Get rid of Dumbledore again. Then get all the students. Then take care of the Ministry of Magic. That's about it. The young wizard's view of Malfoy is relatively simple. Curiosity, with a little fear. Curiosity is the most important thing. They had never seen a skeleton before, and it was such a completely harmless skeleton. Staying at Hogwarts, young wizards feel confident about their own safety. Dumbledore is here. Can that necromancer professor still hurt them? So in fact, although they sometimes subconsciously stay away from Luo Lin, but I really have no fear of Luo Lin. At most, I keep a respectful distance from him. Regarding Luo Lin's undead servants, many young wizards have even different views. There are several young wizards from Ravenclaw. He has even considered raising an undead servant of his own. They were preparing to find an opportunity to ask Luo Lin for advice. Luo Lin did not know the existence of these people, but if he knew, he would only think that these little wizards were thinking too much. Advertisement undead servants are not so easy to obtain. This is almost exclusive to the necromancer. Not only that, if you want to have undead servants for a long time, you must have the power to control souls. It can be said about the entire Hogwarts and even the entire British wizarding world. Only Voldemort could barely meet the requirements. But there is no way to summon a soul servant of Malfoy's level for a long time. Almost no one in the room had any deep animosity toward Malfoy. Except Malfoy, who should be called Draco now. Draco caught sight of the skeleton that had punched him. He touched his nose, which still hurt slightly. This is an insult to him. It is also a humiliation to the Malfoy family. A damn skeleton actually dares to call Malfoy. It's so abominable. By the way, Draco also hated Roland. He knew Malfoy was Rowling's man. The name was also given by Luo Lin. It's obvious when you look at it this way. Rowling, the evil necromancer, must be hostile to the great Malfoy family. For this situation, Draco decided to find an opportunity to tell his father and let him teach Rowling a lesson. Although Rowling is a professor at Hogwarts, he is nothing compared to his father, who is the school director of Hogwarts. If his father wanted, 
He could even forcibly fire Luo Lin. Certainly, that was with Dumbledore's consent. At this time, there is no doubt that Dumbledore's reputation is far inferior to that of his father. As long as Dumbledore wanted Rowling to continue to be a professor, neither the Ministry of Magic nor other school directors would object to his wishes. Draco didn't even think about firing Rowling. He just hoped that Rowling would let Malfoy apologize to him humbly. And he wanted Rowling to turn Malfoy over to him. Make Malfoy his house elf. Only then will he take revenge severely. Rowling didn't know what Draco was thinking. But even if he knew, he would only think that this naughty kid is mentally ill. If it weren't for Dumbledore's sake, he doesn't care about being a professor here. A Malfoy family just wants to take advantage of him? I simply don't know how to write the word death. Advertisement. Chapter 93. The Little Wizards Left. Malfoy also arrived at Luo Lin's side smoothly. Luo Lin looked a little depressed. Malfoy immediately became concerned. Master, what's wrong with you? Why do you seem to be in a bad mood? Tell you about your loyal servant Malfoy. I will solve your problems. As he spoke, he glanced at Blake, who was standing on Rollins' shoulder. What he meant was obvious. Blake, you piece of shit. It actually made the owner feel bad. Black didn't want to talk to Malfoy. A nuisance. Don't you have any idea why the master is in a bad mood? All right. Judging from Malfoy's performance, it seems that he really doesn't understand. But Black could understand. For Malfoy, except for the master and his few friends in the dark room, everyone else is trash in front of him. He doesn't even look at her or care what other people think. Therefore, in his opinion, shouting the master's name loudly in the auditorium is an expression of respect for the master, and it also shows his loyalty to the master. Of course, there is also a small thought of asking for credit. As for what the surrounding humans thought, that was beyond his consideration. Black's personality is different from Malfoy's. She is more delicate, able to understand the feelings of others, and basically understands Luo Lin's thoughts. So she wouldn't do something like Malfoy, because she knows that the master doesn't like to be too conspicuous. But in fact, among all the soul servants, Blake is quite different. Because most soul servants think similar to Malfoy. That is, Luo Lin is the supreme being and should be the center of everyone's attention. Everyone also needs to respect Luo Lin, even Longbottom. Although I wouldn't say that, but this is basically the idea in my heart. It can only be said that they don't understand Luo Lin well enough. This is also Blake's superiority over them. Advertisement, although she also feels that the master is the supreme being, but she can see the master's thoughts without ruining the master's inconspicuous situation. If the master wants to be low-key, then let him be low-key. As servants, they only need to stay by their master's side and listen to orders at any time. Think of this. Black squatted on his master's shoulders with peace of mind and glanced at Malfoy disdainfully. Idiot. A fool like this will never become his master's favorite servant. Luo Lin didn't pay attention to the interaction between the two soul servants. He has basically recovered now, although Malfoy's actions brought him into the spotlight. But he didn't blame Malfoy either mainly because he didn't warn before and didn't expect this situation. He who does not know is not guilty. Not to mention that Malfoy had just returned from his mission. Encourage should be given instead of complaining and blaming. So Luo Lin adjusted his expression, smiled and said to Malfoy, It's okay, I just thought of something unhappy. Malfoy, I saw Harry's situation. You did a good job and completed the task successfully. Is there anything you want? Luo Lin may not be able to do well in other aspects but he can still do it. Malfoy was even more proud when he heard his words. Thank you for the compliment, great master. As your most loyal servant, I don't need anything. I just want to be by your master's side and do things for you. Black and Longbottom are careless and can't do much. I'm afraid the great master can't bear it long ago. I asked the master to take them back and call Avery and Flynn out. They and I together, we can definitely do better than Black and Longbottom. After Malfoy finished speaking, Rowling still had no reaction, and Black, who had been quiet for a long time, suddenly became furious. She flew up from Luo Lin's shoulders and rushed straight towards Malfoy, shouting, Malfoy, how dare you let me leave the master's side? I will fight with you. Malfoy didn't care. Who makes you not valuable enough? There is really too little you can do. Only those of us who are valuable can help the master do more things. Luo Lin reached out and grabbed Blake, patted her head comfortingly, and glared at Malfoy helplessly. I'm asking you what you want. I'm not asking you to tease Blake here. Why did you imitate Avery? Black and Longbottom have done well. I will not let them go back unless their bodies are damaged. Change your request. Advertisement Black was very happy when he heard what Roland said, and snorted coldly. 
Master, Malfoy is just ignorant. His mission has been completed now. You'd better send him back to prevent him from causing trouble to you outside. Luo Lin glared at him. Malfoy couldn't help shrinking his skull. Hearing Black's words again, he plopped down at Roland's feet. Master, no, I was just joking. Don't let me go back. I'm not familiar with Avery and the others. I promise that from now on I will be honest and will never cause you trouble, Master. I will do whatever Master asks me to do, and I will not do anything that Master does not ask me to do. Look at him in such a frightened state, Luo Lin said angrily. Get up, when did I say I would send you back? But Black is right, don't cause trouble for me. If you cause trouble for me, I will definitely take you back. When the time comes, let's change your frame to someone else. Luo Lin really didn't want to cause trouble, and he also knew Malfoy's temper, so he deliberately spoke harshly. Malfoy stood up and quickly assured, Don't worry, I am loyal to you and will never cause trouble, and I will do even better than Black. Um, Luo Lin's expression softened a lot. Rowling and Malfoy Black communicate with them. The people around them looked at them in a daze. Is this an undead servant? Why are these skeletons so spiritual? They look more human than some people. Hagrid and the professors who often played poker were slightly better, and they had many contacts with Black and Longbottom. I know that Black and Longbottom are undead with great personalities. Although Malfoy's personality is a little more flamboyant, they can still accept it. It's just that they didn't pay attention before. Now that the names Black, Longbottom, and Malfoy were connected together, they also noticed Roland's naming method. Name it after the surnames of the 28 families. It can only be said that Luo Lin is really brave. These pureblood families still have a lot of power in wizard society. Especially a family like Malfoy is very influential. This is how Luo Lin named his undead servants. If it reaches their ears, they will definitely be dissatisfied with Luo Lin. That's when. Even with Dumbledore protecting him, Luo Lin might be in trouble. Advertisement Chapter 94 Malfoy seemed a lot more honest. Luo Lin breathed a sigh of relief. But he didn't think that after he said Malfoy, Malfoy would become an honest person like Longbottom. For the undead, personality is extremely difficult to change. Luo Lin understands this very well. After summoning these soul servants, when we get along, there are many soul servants with extremely weird personalities. He had also thought about changing their personalities. It didn't work at all. Even if he uses his master's authority to forcefully issue orders, it can only be controlled for a while, and it will relapse over time. Luo Lin knew it then. The characters of his soul servants should be affected by some special factors that make them so difficult to change. This influence is most likely related to the underlying structure of the soul. With his current level of necromancer, he still can't understand it. So since then he has given up on changing the different personalities of these souls. Anyway, although these soul servants have weird personalities, they are full of loyalty to him and will never do anything detrimental to him. Malfoy did the same thing this time. Calling him in the auditorium would not actually cause any real harm to him. The reason why Luo Lin didn't like it was just because he personally wanted to keep a low profile and didn't want to be noticed by too many eyes. And the reason why he said harsh words was to scare Malfoy. I also want Malfoy to restrain himself a little in the next period of time and not go too far. Rowling estimated that he wouldn't stay at Hogwarts for long. After all, he could barely be considered an employee of the Ministry of Magic. It was Dumbledore's invitation to teach defense against the dark arts here at Hogwarts. No one knew whether the Ministry of Magic would suddenly ask him to go back. Dumbledore and the Ministry of Magic. Rowling still prefers the Ministry of Magic. The Ministry of Magic paid him such a large salary, but he was a loyal person and could not directly betray the Ministry of Magic. Coming to Hogwarts is more of a visiting mentality. I also want to experience what it's like to be a teacher. So he didn't actually think of himself as a Hogwarts person. Certainly. Advertisement, this is just my current thinking. I don't know if my thoughts will change later. Malfoy just needs to be a little less aggressive during this time. Wait until you get back to Azkaban. Malfoy can do whatever he wants when the time comes. Rowling will not give Malfoy any restrictions in Azkaban. It was a very freeing place. But there is another possibility. That's when he became the headmaster of Hogwarts. And if he becomes the headmaster of Hogwarts, is there still a need to restrict Malfoy? What's the point of being more arrogant then? Just like Dumbledore now. If Dumbledore's pet got a little arrogant at school, who would say anything? Obviously not. As soon as Luo Lin thought of Dumbledore, Dumbledore walked up to him, glanced at Malfoy, and said, Roland, is this Mr. Malfoy who is going to accompany Harry? Luo Lin nodded. Yes, Professor. Harry bought his body. Dumbledore smiled. 
Harry is indeed very rich. Buying a body is nothing to him. As he spoke, he turned towards Malfoy and bowed slightly. Thank you, Mr. Malfoy, for accompanying Harry. I just noticed that Harry looks fine. This is all your fault. From his words, Rowling knew that Dumbledore still paid close attention to Harry. Dumbledore knew that Harry had a bad life before, so he said that Harry seemed fine now. In this way, there is nothing wrong with Dumbledore thanking Malfoy. Looking at the white-bearded old man in front of him, Malfoy's eyes flashed with green light. He had been summoned to this world for nearly a year, and he still knew a lot about this world. Of course he had heard of Dumbledore's famous name. We also know that this is a legendary wizard. Although no legendary wizard can compare to his master, but it is also worthy of respect. Such a big shot thanked him and Malfoy, who had been a little panicked just now, suddenly became proud again. Oh, you're talking about that kid? Before he could finish the word little devil, he immediately realized that Luo Lin was beside him and quickly changed his words. I mean, Harry's kid is pretty good, and he's quite to my liking. And I'm following my master's orders. If you want to thank me, just thank my great master. Noticed his change of tune. Luo Lin couldn't laugh or cry. Advertisement Malfoy's character is indeed hard to change, and he is pretty good as he is now. Dumbledore didn't pay attention to Malfoy's change of title and nodded slightly. Roland, I will naturally thank him, but Mr. Malfoy should also be thanked. Malfoy touched his mouth with his little paw reservedly. Since Mr. Dumbledore has said so, I will accept it reluctantly. If it weren't for the smile in his voice that could hardly be suppressed, perhaps others would really think that he was a humble skeleton. Luo Lin patted Malfoy on the head with some embarrassment. Sorry, Professor, my undead servants have some special personalities. Dumbledore shook his head and didn't care. These gentlemen and ladies are all excellent. With them by your side to help you. I believe you can do everything well, Luo Lin. Malfoy was very happy when his head was patted by Luo Lin. Hearing Dumbledore's praise again, he couldn't help but say, Of course, under the leadership of the great master, we will. Luo Lin immediately covered his mouth, preventing him from saying the next words. Certainly. Covering the mouth is of no use to the undead. Luo Lin still doesn't understand how they make sounds. He covered Malfoy's mouth, just to let Malfoy know that it was time to shut up. As soon as Luo Lin heard this familiar beginning, he immediately understood what Malfoy wanted to say. That's not a pleasant thing to say. This was what Malfoy and several of his soul servants who had a good relationship with him said most often in Azkaban. It is said that under the leadership of Luo Lin, they will conquer the world and make the world surrender to Luo Lin's rule. I don't know how they came up with this idea. He actually wanted Luo Lin to conquer and rule the world. Luo Lin is really unjust. He can guarantee that he really does not have such thoughts. At least not yet. And if their words were heard by others, the rumor that he wanted to become the Dark Lord would be confirmed. I have given you countless warnings before. Malfoy and the others barely kept mentioning this. Now I almost said it again. Fortunately, Luo Lin reacted quickly, otherwise he would have said this in front of Dumbledore and so many professors. He felt that he might not be able to stay in Hogwarts. The Ministry of Magic may not be able to stay. Luo Lin didn't want to lose these two well-paying jobs. Advertisement <laughs> Chapter 95 Although Dumbledore didn't know why Rowling covered Malfoy's mouth, but he didn't get to the bottom of it either. Come when he wants to. Luo Lin has such a low-key temperament he probably doesn't want his undead to talk nonsense. Malfoy did look a little unsteady, but Dumbledore still liked Malfoy. I think Malfoy has a lot of personality. Thank you for the compliment, Professor, but I think I still need to work harder. After Luo Lin stopped Malfoy, he spoke. Dumbledore nodded slightly. You are still too humble. I believe you will do better than most wizards. Then the two chatted a little more. Dumbledore left. Dumbledore left the auditorium, and most of the other professors had gone back. Only Hagrid was left standing nearby, seemingly wanting to say something to Luo Lin. Luo Lin turned to face Hagrid. What's wrong, Hagrid? Aren't you going back? Hagrid scratched his head in embarrassment. Professor, I have something to trouble you with. Is that okay? Although he didn't understand what Hagrid could do to trouble him, Luo Lin was very happy about his first friend at Hogwarts. Of course. After all, we are friends. As long as I can do it, just ask. It's not anything particularly important. It's just. Hagrid suddenly seemed a little hesitant, but finally said it. That's it. I want to invite you and Harry to my cabin next weekend. Is that okay? Luo Lin thought it was something, but it turned out that he was just a guest. He didn't understand what Hagrid was so embarrassed about. Can I still disagree if you invite me to be a guest? We are friends. Inviting guests to friends should be very casual. 
Just like I invite you to play poker in my dormitory, Hagrid smiled and nodded. Professor, I understand, but my purpose of inviting you this time is not that simple. Luo Lin was stunned for a moment. Hagrid's words are indeed very direct, but why is the purpose not pure? Is it possible that Hagrid is going to do something bad? Noticing his eyes, Hagrid waved his hands repeatedly. Sorry, my wording may not be accurate. I want to invite you this time, Professor. Actually, the main reason is not to invite you, but to invite Harry. Luo Lin listened to his words, which were a bit convoluted, but he basically understood. Advertisement, you mean you mainly want to get to know Harry this time? Invite him to be a guest? Hagrid nodded heavily. That's right. I just met Harry and haven't spoken a few words to him yet. When I first saw Harry, I remember the time when I sent him to a muggle family. I heard you, Professor, say that Harry was having a hard time in that family. I feel that I have a certain responsibility, so I hope to be friends with him or be able to help him. Luo Lin understood completely now. Hagrid originally thought that Harry was having a rough time, so he wanted to make up for it. It can only be said that Hagrid is still too kind. Harry's matter clearly had nothing to do with Hagrid. The suffering he suffered. The main reason is because of Voldemort, and the secondary reason is that the Dosleys are not human beings in Dumbledore's choice. Hagrid just followed Dumbledore's orders to bring Harry to the Dosleys' house. He should not bear any responsibility at all. Hagrid's moral standards are so high that he would feel guilty even if it had nothing to do with him. Think this through. Luo Lin shook his head slightly. Hagrid, this has nothing to do with you, and you shouldn't feel bad about it. Hagrid smiled. I know, Professor, but I really want to have a better relationship with Harry. When I see him, I will think of Lily and James. He said so. Luo Lin didn't say much. It is good to have a kind friend. Who doesn't like to be friends with a high moral person? Even those who are full of evil. Evil people will not be sympathetic to evil people, let alone trust another evil person, but they will trust those good people. Certainly. This is not to say that Luo Lin is a bad person, but Luo Lin is indeed willing to be friends with kind people. Of course, I will go on time when the time comes. After all, Harry is also the student to whom I personally sent the notice, and he will also become a student of my defense against the dark arts course. Luo Lin agreed. Hagrid looked very happy. Great professor. Harry admires you very much. As long as you are willing to come, Harry will definitely be willing to come too. Luo Lin was stunned for a moment. Is there such a factor? Harry admires him very much? It seems that there is such a thing. Luo Lin recalled Harry's expression when he faced him before and felt that Hagrid's judgment might be correct. But he didn't seem to do anything special. I just fulfilled the duties that a teacher should have. Advertisement Harry actually admired him for it. All I can say is that he is indeed a child. Maybe it was because I had been too miserable before. Luo Lin felt a faint sympathy in his heart. We have decided to visit Hagrid's cabin next weekend. Hagrid initially set a time of Saturday morning. Luo Lin felt that he might sleep in on Saturday. So after discussing with Hagrid, he changed it to Saturday afternoon. At the same time, another idea came to Luo Lin's mind. Since he came to this world, it's been a long time since I went out for a picnic with others and had a barbecue. So he was thinking about not just sitting around in Hagrid's hut. Instead, they were having a barbecue on the edge of the Forbidden Forest. Hagrid's eyes lit up when he heard Luo Lin's idea. He had never thought of such a thing. In other words, he has never gone on a picnic with anyone else. Ever since he became a Hogwarts employee, he has been working hard and dedicated to Hogwarts. I have very little time. There are not many entertainment activities. Either raise some pets, go to Hogsmeade Village for a drink, or bake some snacks at home. To say that he doesn't want to play with others is definitely a lie. But with his status and reputation, no one is willing to play with him. So Luo Lin suddenly proposed to have a picnic and barbecue together. Hagrid's heart, which had been silent for a long time, suddenly became active. You can have a barbecue with Harry and Roland. This was perfect for Hagrid. He immediately offered to prepare all the ingredients and utensils himself. Luo Lin doesn't have many requirements on what to eat. He just specifically asked Hagrid not to bring rock biscuits with him. Although his teeth are still in good shape, he really has no need to grind his teeth now. As for Harry, Harry is still a child and is in the period of teething. It is better not to torment the child. Hagrid readily agreed and left happily. Luo Lin also returned to his dormitory to sleep and rest. Advertisement Chapter 96 Lying on the bed in his dormitory, Luo Lin was looking at his face in a small mirror. The magic marks on his face gave him a bit of a toothache. Although I have already thought about covering my face with a mask. But when he thought that he couldn't show such a handsome face to others, 
he felt that it was such a loss. Shouldn't have listened to Professor Flittick's slander in the first place. Playing poker in your spare time is just for fun. It's good to relax and unwind. Roland has no problem with playing poker. But the root of all evil is the punishment proposed by Professor Flittick. If he hadn't said there would be punishment, why would there be so many things on his face? So gambling harms people. Luo Lin had a deeper understanding of the dangers of gambling. Never gamble. No matter what you do, don't take any chances. If you gamble, you will definitely lose. Rowling felt that Professor Flittick had given him a lesson in gambling. But regret is regret. Playing cards is quite enjoyable. You can still play cards in the future, but it's best not to be punished. Or the punishment can be changed to something insignificant. At least it won't affect his handsome face. An idea just came to my mind. Luo Lin instantly became alert. He found that something was wrong with his situation. It's not like I'm feeling unwell or anything. But why have you become more and more narcissistic recently? You know, this is not Luo Lin's nature. Although Luo Lin thought he was pretty good looking, he would never think of his handsome face. This is a sign of extreme narcissism. And this idea has popped up in his mind more than once. Luo Lin thinks this is very abnormal. He couldn't help but begin to examine his soul. But no matter how he checked, there is no problem with the soul. There is nothing superfluous attached to the soul. And the nature of the soul has not changed. But why do narcissistic thoughts pop up so suddenly? Advertisement, could it be that my personality has subtly changed during this period? Luo Lin thought about it seriously and turned his thinking towards his own system. Unfortunately, the system doesn't have much intelligence. Otherwise, he can ask the system what the situation is. He could only rely on various small functions of the system module to check his own situation bit by bit. It took over an hour. Luo Lin breathed a sigh of relief. Finally found out. It's actually related to Dementors. Dementors. It is the most frightening and hateful creature in the magical world. Their main duty is to guard Azkaban together with the Ministry of Magic. Certainly. For a period of time, I mainly guarded Azkaban with Roland. Luo Lin used the soul contract to regain these Dementors and can perfectly control these Dementors. But he was at Hogwarts now, and the Dementors are still in Azkaban. How could his situation be related to Dementors? This has to mention the characteristics of magical creatures like Dementors. Dementors are big black figures wearing cloaks. They have no eyes and can't see anything. They can only approach people by feeling. They will exude a rotten stench, slide forward, swallow the surrounding air, and make everything around them cold. They appear in groups in the darkest and filthiest places, causing corruption and despair. And their most important ability, it is to suck the peace, hope, and happiness out of the air around you. If someone gets too close to the Dementor, any good feelings or happy memories from him will be sucked away, and he will eventually become as soulless as a Dementor and become evil. They can actively absorb the victim's soul and use the Dementor's kiss. The kissed victim will lose his memory and become a walking zombie. Even the Ministry of Magic is very afraid of this kind of creature, and there is almost no way to deal with it except to rely on the Patronus charm. That's why the Ministry of Magic was so nervous when Luo Lin escaped from prison with the Dementors. Fortunately, Luo Lin is a lawful neutral or even lawful good person, so he did not cause any bad consequences. But the Ministry of Magic also made an agreement with Rowling that Dementors must not be allowed to leave Azkaban again. Luo Lin is very indifferent. Dementors were of no use to him. He has soul servants, which are much easier to use than Dementors, and are far more intelligent than Dementors. This time out of Azkaban, Rowling did not leave any soul servants in Azkaban, but only left all the Dementors there to guard Azkaban as before. It's because the Dementors are in Azkaban. Advertisement only then did he influence Luo Lin today. The Dementors signed a soul contract with Luo Lin. There is a special connection between souls. Take advantage of this connection. Luo Lin can send messages to Dementors and transfer a certain amount of soul power. The food of creatures like Dementors is souls. They need the power of their souls to maintain their existence. Otherwise it will wear out slowly. Therefore, after Luo Lin did not allow them to devour people's souls, they had to inject soul power into them regularly to allow them to survive. It was fine before in Azkaban. As long as the Dementors need soul power, they will come to Luo Lin. But after leaving Azkaban, Luo Lin forgot about this matter. In other words, since he left Azkaban, for more than a month, the Dementors have not been replenished with soul power. The contract they signed was a master-servant contract, which allowed the master to contact the servant, but it did not allow the servant to actively contact the master. Therefore, the Dementors were unable to contact Roland. One's own soul power cannot be replenished. 
the body is constantly worn down. In this life and death time, the Dementors ignored Luo Lin's original order and relied on instinct to devour souls. And when they devour souls, some special power will be transmitted to Luo Lin through the contract. Luo Lin had banned the Dementors from devouring souls as soon as they took control of them, so he never discovered this. I didn't expect to find it under the current circumstances. This special substance is similar to soul power, but also very different. It can induce certain emotions in people silently. The emotion Luo Lin was aroused was appreciation for himself, which is commonly known as narcissism. Fortunately, Luo Lin himself is relatively calm. Found this out today, but it's actually too late. This special substance had been produced more than 10 or even 20 days ago. In other words, at that time, someone had already been devoured by Dementors. Dementors are confined to Azkaban. They probably still dare not disobey this order. So someone in Azkaban was devoured by Dementors. Luo Lin got this judgment. But what puzzled him was, who was devoured? And why didn't the Ministry of Magic notify him? Advertisement Chapter 97 Luo Lin has no way of understanding the situation in Azkaban now, but he knew that the most important thing to do now was to quickly transfer soul power to the Dementors. Otherwise, another life will be lost. Use the soul contract in your mind. Luo Lin transferred enough soul power to those Dementors. After doing this, he turned to look at Blake and others. Blake, remember to remind me about once every half a month to provide you with soul power. Black nodded and was about to speak when Malfoy, who was lying on the ground, immediately jumped up and spoke first. Don't worry, master. Even if this idiot Black forgets, your loyal servant I will remind you right away. Black glared at him fiercely. The master ordered me. Malfoy was a little disdainful now. So what? I am the most useful one to the master. He now feels like he has regained his cuteness. Luo Lin was a little helpless. How long had passed but Malfoy had already returned to this state. Although it was a private space now and Malfoy could not affect him no matter how he behaved, he still felt a little uneasy. Malfoy, let me say it again. Be honest these days and don't get me into trouble, do you understand? Luo Lin warned again. Of course, my master. Your orders are everything to me. Malfoy said firmly. Luo Lin looked at Malfoy and could see Malfoy's loyalty inside. Okay, I will believe you once, but if you let me down, I'm afraid you won't be able to come out for a long time. Malfoy raised his little paw confidently. I will never betray the trust of my great master. After saying that, he glanced at Blake who was gloating next to him, and a green light flashed in his eyes. I was very disdainful in my heart. A waste like Blake is so useless that he can't do anything, but he can stay with his master. He wanted to mock Black severely, but in the end he didn't say it, mainly because he didn't want to make his master angry. Forget it about Longbottom. Longbottom has enough strength, but Black is really a bit weak. He hopes that more capable people like him will come out to assist his master. So Malfoy made up his mind that he would behave well in the next period of time, not to cause trouble to his master, and let his master praise him greatly. When the time comes to win the favor of the master, he will find a way to get a few of his friends to help the great master achieve great things. Advertisement just thinking about the scene at that time. Malfoy couldn't help but laugh. Luo Lin looked at him, a little confused as to what was going on. But as long as Malfoy is obedient, he can still accept other small quirks. It's not too early either. He has class tomorrow. Although the problem of Dementors has not been fully understood yet, since the Ministry of Magic did not notify him, it should not be a big deal. Presumably the people who must die are the prisoners of Azkaban. In this case, Luo Lin wouldn't have to think too much about this issue. He turned off the lights in the room, fell into sleep. While he was sleeping, Blake stood on the birdcage in the window as usual. Longbottom lay prone at the door. Malfoy saw where they were with some disdain. As the most loyal servant of the master, of course, you should stay closer to your master so that you can protect him when he is in danger. So, Malfoy chose to sleep on the cabinet beside Luo Lin's bed. It was only about 20 centimeters away from Luo Lin. The next morning, the first time Luo Lin woke up, he saw Malfoy. Fortunately, he had been calm for a long time. Otherwise, Malfoy would be scared to death. Malfoy and Black didn't need to sleep. So Malfoy spent the whole night staring at Roland. When Luo Lin opened his eyes, Malfoy's green eyes flickered, looking extremely strange. He patted Malfoy on the head. You are not allowed here in the future, either at the door like Longbottom or in the living room. Advertisement anyway, stay far away from the bed. Otherwise I'm afraid I won't be able to help but destroy you when I wake up, do you understand? Malfoy was frightened by Rowling's words 
and at the same time a little aggrieved. I just want to get closer to the great master. Is this wrong? However, he did not dare to hesitate and nodded repeatedly. I understand, master. Finished Malfoy, gloating about the clothes Blake brought him. Longbottom, don't take your shoes and put them by the bed. After Luo Lin put on his clothes and shoes and washed himself, Malfoy and Longbottom stayed in the dormitory and took Black out. After Roland and Black left, Malfoy sat down on the carpet, looking very unhappy. Longbottom moved his bone tail and asked doubtfully, Malfoy, what's wrong with you? Is it because the master doesn't take you out? Malfoy glanced at him with green eyes, shook his head first, and then nodded. I can't accept whether the master takes me or not, but why does the master take Blake? She will mess everything up? Longbottom was even more confused now. Black is quite good. He can do whatever the master needs. Why do you think Black will mess things up? Malfoy got up from the ground and walked around the dormitory. Longbottom, you are too naive you don't understand. Avery told me that Blake is a fool. She can't do anything. And she has a special ability to mess up anything. Longbottom was stunned by what he said. What do you mean? Why did Avery tell you that Black would mess things up and she would mess things up? Isn't this the information you got yourself? Malfoy chuckled. How could I care about a weakling like Black? Only Avery pays more attention to her. I have discovered before that Avery often observes Black. I can definitely believe what he says. You should have seen it before in Azkaban. Avery would always bully Black. He just didn't want Black to get too close to his master, so as not to cause harm to his master. Avery told you this? Longbottom asked. Malfoy nodded. Of course, Avery is my good brother, and his words must be correct. Longbottom now understood the reason, but he vaguely felt that something was wrong. Avery did like to bully Blake before, but he could feel that Avery had no resentment or hostility towards Blake. Why are you here in Malfoy? Does Avery think that Blake is a loser who fails to achieve anything but fails? There must be a deeper reason for this. Longbottom still doesn't understand. Advertisement Chapter 98 Luo Lin didn't know that the two soul servants in his dormitory were chatting. Black also didn't know that Malfoy spoke ill of him in front of Longbottom. She was very proud now. The master took her out without Malfoy and Longbottom. She immediately felt a sense of superiority. Blake felt that this must be because he worked hard for his master in normal times and was noticed by his master, so he was so special to her. She was now standing on Luo Lin's shoulders, her head held high. If Luo Lin knew what she was thinking, you will definitely feel that she really thinks too much. The reason why I took only Black and no one else with me today, it's all because he has to go to class. He was going to meet the little wizard at Hogwarts. Take three undead at once. He was afraid that the little wizards might be at odds with each other. Although judging from previous performance, the little wizards didn't seem to reject these undead at all. They were even very curious and wanted to get close. You still have to be a little safer. Luo Lin became a teacher for the first time and wanted to be cautious in everything he did. Blake has an owl-shaped skeleton, plus she is female and has a nice voice, so she should be more approachable to little wizards. Compared to Malfoy and Longbottom, her advantages are very obvious. Among them, Malfoy Roland would definitely not be brought to the young wizards if he was not sure that there would be no accidents. Today is Luo Lin's first class. It was also the first Monday he had ever experienced. According to Dumbledore's arrangements, he doesn't need to teach little wizards above fourth grade now. Young wizards in fourth grade and above are given to Professor Snape. This made Luo Lin feel relieved. Although I don't like Snape that much, but this time Snape really helped him take some of the pressure off. Snape's level of dark magic goes without saying. Even among the Death Eaters, he is still among the best. He came to be the defense against the Dark Arts Professor, which was more than enough. And Snape has always wanted to become a defense against the Dark Arts Professor. It was just intercepted by Luo Lin. Of course, even if he wasn't Luo Lin, he would still be intercepted by Professor Coral. There would be no difference. Advertisement, but if Snape can enjoy the addiction of being a defense against the Dark Arts Professor for a while, he will definitely be in a good mood. Roland had no problem with that. He didn't fully understand the content related to defense against the Dark Arts. It's okay to teach the first, second, and third grade students in the lower grades. If you teach students in fourth, fifth, or even sixth or seventh grade, the difference will definitely be a lot worse. Even if it's scripted, Luo Lin felt that he might even be interested. If the little wizards ask him questions and he doesn't know how to do it, wouldn't that be embarrassing? So he agreed to Dumbledore's arrangement without hesitation. This is the first semester of school. He only teaches first, second, and third grade wizards. 
It will be decided next semester based on the situation whether he can teach senior students. Luo Lin thinks there should be no problem next semester. His learning ability is still very strong. After one semester of study, no matter what, you can complete the basic teaching content, right? At least his performance will not be worse than Professor Coral after being possessed by Voldemort. Although Professor Coral's level is definitely much higher than him, Coral deliberately pretends to be like that, and the performance is much worse. His first class was the second class in the morning. Class time is 10 o'clock. The class is for the second-year Gryffindor wizards. The second-grade wizard has just entered school for one year. Most of them are children of 12 or 13 years old. Luo Lin is quite confident in dealing with these people. But now there's one more problem to deal with. He had to make a mask to cover his face. Making an ordinary mask is of course very simple, and there is no difficulty for him. But he wanted to make a more handsome mask, at least not ugly, which required a certain amount of energy. Luo Lin planned to go to Hogsmeade Village after dinner. It's only 7 o'clock now. If class starts at 10 o'clock, he still has about 2 hours, excluding eating. There were already some students in the auditorium at this time. Most of them are senior students. Because at this time, the lower grade students probably don't even understand the stairs in Hogwarts, so it would be difficult for them to get to the auditorium on time for dinner. Professor Flittick was already up. Looking at the few marks on his face, Luo Lin felt depressed. Advertisement Professor Flittick was obviously the culprit who proposed the punishment, but he turned out to be the one who seemed the most normal, which was really uncomfortable. So he wasn't going to say hello to Professor Flittick, but Professor Flittick wouldn't let him go. As soon as he saw Rowling arriving, Professor Flittick came to him. Luo Lin, you got up really early today. In the past, Luo Lin didn't like to have breakfast very much, and he also preferred to sleep in, so he would get up a little later. This should be Professor Flittick's impression of him. As for what Professor Flittick called him, this was what Luo Lin requested after the two got acquainted. He didn't quite like how an older person like Professor Flittick called him Professor Rathma, but it was more affectionate to call him Rowling. In fact, he also told Hagrid about this. He prefers that friends call each other by their first names. But Hagrid was more insistent. What he said is that you should call the professor in school, and if you're outside, you can call him by his first name. Luo Lin could only accept it reluctantly. Fortunately, it's just a title and doesn't have much impact. I have class today, Professor, Luo Lin said. Professor Flittick laughed. I know, that's why I came here to cheer you up. I hope you can show your style in the first class. I hope so. Luo Lin shrugged. He didn't have much confidence in it. After all, he is a necromancer, and the little wizards must have been told by their parents. Except for those young wizards of muggle origin, I am afraid that everyone else will stay away from him. Of course, except for those brave little wizards. This is Rollins' idea. I just don't know if his thoughts are the same as reality. Everything can only be revealed when the actual class begins. Seeing that he was not confident enough, Professor Flittick didn't say anything but only gave him a few more words of encouragement before leaving him. Luo Lin found a corner to sit down and finished his breakfast quickly, then quickly left Hogwarts and headed to Hogsmeade, standing on black. Arrive at Hogsmeade. Luo Lin didn't hesitate at all. He immediately started looking for more suitable materials to make masks. It takes about half an hour. He collected all the materials. Then he returned to Hogwarts and spent 10 minutes making a new mask in his dormitory. Wait until 10 o'clock. Luo Lin wore the mask he made and came to the classroom. Advertisement. Chapter 99. Rollins' Mask. How to say. It's still more in line with his own aesthetics. As a necromancer, it should be reasonable to choose the mask of Ichigo Kurosaki and Bleach, right? All related to death. Luo Lin felt that he would not have any objections if he copied Kurosaki Ichigo. It's okay to have opinions. Kurosaki Ichigo can come to this world to negotiate with him. He is a very talkative person. As long as Ichigo Kurosaki is willing to come to him, he will definitely not wear such an infringing mask. He touched the bone mask on his face. Luo Lin felt that he was having a trance just now, while shopping in Hogsmeade Village to choose a mask. Somehow I was attracted to a very beautiful bone fragment. It was a large bone fragment, larger than his face. See this white bone fragment. At that moment, Luo Lin suffered from Chinibyu and the mask of Kurosaki Ichigo in the fifth stage of his incarnation directly appeared in his mind. The two lines were separated on both sides of the mask, and combined with the teeth of the skeleton, Luo Lin thought it was very handsome when he saw it in his previous life. I still remember it until now. Then the more Luo Lin thought about it, the more he felt that this white bone fragment was very suitable for making a mask. Kurosaki Ichigo's mask is also very handsome. 
It's just that he thinks it's handsome, but others may not. At that time, Luo Lin was still hesitant. However, after looking around and failing to find any other more suitable materials, and the image of the mask kept popping up in his mind, he finally made up his mind. Use bone fragments. Cooperate with the soul power to transform the bones. The mask on the face was created very smoothly. I can't say that it is very similar to Kurosaki Ichigo's mask, I can only say that it is exactly the same. When looking in the mirror, advertisement Luo Lin admired it for a while. Although it looks a little weird, it doesn't look like a mask that a good person would wear. Compared to the stripes of magic marks on his face, this mask still looks much better. The key is to be in line with Luo Lin's wishes and make him feel happy. That's all. Luo Lin, wearing a skull mask and a wizard's robe, came to the classroom around 10 o'clock. The class time for this class is 10.15. Luo Lin had already arrived in the corridor at 10.05. To his surprise, the little wizards came earlier. He had already heard loud discussions in the classroom in the corridor. This semester's defense against magic teacher is Professor Rasma, the legendary and terrifying necromancer. What should I do if I'm a little excited now? I heard from my mother that Professor Rasma has been sleeping in the cemetery since he was a child and being with ghosts every day. That's terrible. I heard from my brother that Professor Rasma is not as scary as the legend says, so you don't need to worry too much. Luo Lin's hearing is pretty good, and he can hear the words inside relatively clearly. It seems that the little wizards are quite enthusiastic. This is my first class today, and I shouldn't be left out. He didn't care much about the prejudices of the little wizards. Children could easily change their opinions. Just when he was about to enter, there were a few words that made him pause. How is Professor Rasma's defense against the dark arts class? Will he be better than the previous professor? Or will he teach us undead magic? I don't know, but Dumbledore personally invited him here, so it should be no problem. Now I'm mainly worried about whether Professor Rasma can teach here for a year. In fact, I'm still very curious about him. Yes, it is said that the professor position of this course has been cursed by a mysterious man. Because he did not apply for this position, no teacher will hold this position for more than one year. I don't know if Professor Rasma can survive it. Actually, I have an idea. You said that Dumbledore invited Professor Rasma to be the defense against the dark arts teacher. Did he just want him to hear these words? Luo Lin twitched the corner of his mouth. These little wizards know so much. It is said that he really had such speculation at the time. When Dumbledore asked him to be the defense against the dark arts professor, did he want to kill people with a borrowed knife? Use Voldemort's curse to deal with him. After all, defense against the dark arts professors don't end well. Luo Lin knew this trick in his previous life. Advertisement the most expensive course for teachers at Hogwarts is defense against the dark arts. There have been seven professors in seven years. It's really not something that ordinary courses can do. And the end of each professor was not so good. Although Luo Lin had only watched Harry Potter in One Piece, he was still very clear about the fate of these seven professors. The first one is naturally Professor Quirrell. Possessed by Voldemort, Harry was killed by his mother's guardian in the end. I don't know if Quirrell can escape now that Luo Lin has become the professor of defense against the dark arts. Luo Lin is relatively pessimistic about this point. After all, Voldemort will definitely try his best to steal the Philosopher's Stone. If Quirrell can't resist his order, there is a high probability that he will end up in a miserable way. The second one is Lockhart, a big liar who only forgets Zhou. Luo Lin has a deep impression on him. He can only say that this man is a talent. His end was not bad. That is, he was turned into an idiot by his own forgetting curse and ended up in St. Mungo's Hospital of Magic. The third one was Lupin, a werewolf. Luo Lin didn't have a deep impression on him. He remembered that he resigned on his own initiative and died in the end. The fourth one is Barty Jr. disguised as Moody. No matter it is the real Professor Moody or the disguised Barty Jr., the end is not very good. Moody is killed by Death Eaters, and Barty Jr. is also possessed. If the monster takes a sip, he will most likely turn into a walking zombie. The fifth one is Umbridge, who was the person Roland hated the most when he read the original work. Her end was not very miserable, that is, she was imprisoned in Azkaban. The sixth one is Snape, he can be regarded as a substitute professor, but he also died in the end. The seventh is Carlo. This Roland basically has no influence. I don't know if he is dead or something. Taking into account the fate of seven professors in the past seven years, the conclusion is obvious. The defense against the dark arts professorship does come with a curse, and this curse may be difficult to break. There is no distinction between friend and foe. Otherwise, Dumbledore would not have allowed this curse to exist. Luo Lin didn't care much about curses or not. 
For a necromancer, cursing is such a childish thing. Even for slightly more powerful necromancers, curses are their food. So when Luo Lin agreed to become the defense against the dark arts professor, he didn't worry about the curse of this position at all. He was a little surprised that even the second grade wizard knew the news. This made him wonder if someone deliberately revealed this news to the little wizards. Otherwise, logically speaking, they would not have mentioned such a thing. Advertisement Chapter 100 With Doubts Luo Lin stepped to the door of the classroom. The little wizard sitting in front noticed his arrival and stopped communicating. After the little wizard behind found out, they all realized something. The classroom soon became quiet. Luo Lin stepped onto the podium. Through the mask, gaze at the little wizard below. The little wizard sat down obediently one by one and looked at Luo Lin with wide eyes. From their gaze, apparently they were attracted to the mask on Rollins' face. Most of the little wizards had curiosity in their eyes, looking at the skull mask on Luo Lin's face. There are also a few little wizards who have a little fear on their faces. They look a little scared. It must be because their parents said something to them, or maybe the mask on Luo Lin's face is indeed a bit scary. Luo Lin had a panoramic view of the expressions of each little wizard. He probably understood the little wizard's attitude towards him. It was much better than he had expected before. The little wizards didn't seem to be very afraid of him, but full of curiosity, especially when he comes to class wearing a weird mask. The little wizards seemed to have never seen anything like this before. I immediately became very interested in him and his mask. Luo Lin briefly sensed the emotions in the classroom. There is no disgust whatsoever. There is only a little bit of fear. Most of it is curiosity and expectation. This will be easier to handle. Luo Lin smiled slightly. Although the little wizards couldn't see his smile, he still tried to be as friendly as possible. Hello everyone, my name is Roland Rasma. Judging from the looks of everyone, you should all know me, so I won't introduce you much. Everyone should know that I am a necromancer, and necromancers are obviously evil existences in the magical world. But don't worry, everyone. I am a necromancer who is different. Since Professor Dumbledore invited me to be the teacher of defense against the dark arts, I will do my duty and do my best to teach you. Advertisement, okay. Let's start with the roll call. Luo Lin did not mention the mask on his face, but like other Hogwarts professors, he called the names first. He picked up the roster of the second-year students at Landfinder College and began to call the names. Crotch Sweeney, a chubby little boy raised his hand. Clive Root, the boy in the last row waved to Luo Lin. Cormac McGloggin, Katie Bell, there are only about 20 people in the whole class. Luo Lin quickly finished the roll call. There was also an acquaintance he knew, Katie Bell. By the way, this is also a supporting character in the book. He is the chaser of the Gryffindor Quidditch team and a second-year Gryffindor student. Luo Lin remembered her entirely because he was more interested in Quidditch in the book. Most of the Quidditch players Rowling can remember. Bell was the only old player on Harry's sixth grade team, and he made a deep impression on him. And later Bell also joined Dumbledore's army. But that's all Rowling's impression of Katie Bell. After the name is called, Luo Lin put down the roster and turned his attention to everyone again. The little wizards kept quiet, waiting for Luo Lin to start class. You have been taking the defense against the dark arts course for a year. You must be very clear about what kind of course defense against the dark arts is. It involves dark magic creatures, dark spells, and duels. Anyway, it is to let you learn how to resist various types of attacks. Of black magic. I also know something about your progress. You haven't learned the knowledge related to the dark curse yet. Today I will start with the dark curse as the first lesson I give you. Luo Lin said. The little wizards had expressions of interest on their faces. You must know that Defense Against the Dark Arts is the most interesting course for students at Hogwarts. Advertisement Just because the professor has accidents every year, the Defense Against the Dark Arts course doesn't seem to have much presence. But as soon as they heard that Luo Lin was going to explain the Dark Curse to them, they naturally became energetic. Seeing the studious state of the little wizards, Luo Lin nodded unconsciously. This was his first experience as a teacher. He doesn't know if he can teach well, but he can definitely follow the instructions without making mistakes. After all, these little wizards are only second grade children, and their knowledge of magic is limited to what they learned in first grade, or what their family members told them. Not many little wizards love learning as much as Hermione. They would rather spend their free time dazing and playing than spending their free time studying. In fact, this is quite normal. Education is inherently counterintuitive, and most people have an attitude of disgust and rejection towards learning. Hermione is a special case and her persistence in learning is rare. Even Luo Lin felt that Hermione didn't like to study, 
She just liked to enjoy the fun of progress, show her excellence in front of others, and enjoy the feeling of being in the spotlight. He cleared his throat and said, Dark curse is a type of curse related to black magic. Everyone has been exposed to common spells since the first grade, so they should already know a lot about them. The black magic spell is actually no different from ordinary magic spells. It's just that the effects are different. Like ordinary magic spells, it will exert specific magical effects on the target, but this effect is often negative. The little wizards listen very carefully. Curses are of course the most familiar thing for a wizard. Their charms textbook is standard beginner charms. There was no dark curse in it. So most young wizards don't understand the dark curse, but they know that the dark curse is evil. According to the degree of negative effects that black magic can bring, black magic can be roughly divided into three categories. The least negative ones are jinxes. They affect people, but they are also very interesting. For example, knockback curses and salvos fall into this category. Poisonous spells with medium negative levels will cause a certain degree of pain and harm to people. For example, the bat spirit curse and the toenail growth curse fall into this category. The most negative ones are curses, which can cause intense or even irreversible pain and harm. The well-known unforgivable curse falls into this category. If you want to talk about it in detail, as soon as Luo Lin started teaching, he entered a state of talking. He doesn't need to hold a textbook. These basic knowledge have been memorized in his mind. He did not stay on the podium all the time, but walked around while speaking and at the same time observed the little wizard in the classroom. The eyes of the little wizards were all focused on him, and they would look wherever he went. This 45-minute class was completed smoothly without anyone causing trouble. Advertisement. Thanks for watching. You can find the next videos in the playlist linked in the info card, directly on my channel, or right here on the screen. And as always, if you have any feedback, feel free to share it in the comments too.